to everyone and welcome to GCS Ballpark here in Soje, Illinois. Got a little night baseball action for you. We are a lot behind schedule. This is the fourth game of the day here at GCS Ballpark, so things are a little bit backed up and uh, we are uh, on right after Muscuda took care of Morris by a score of 8-6. to six. I got here at 5 o'clock and that game was supposed to start at 4.15 and they were in the top of the first inning when I showed up here at the ballpark but nevertheless we are here we have waited it all out and we are just moments away from a little Collinsville Cahawk baseball as they get ready to take on the team from Winnetka Illinois in the new Trier Traverians and welcome once again into the pregame show brought to you tonight by LC's pub in Caseyville great food great drinks and great service served up daily at LC's pub in Caseyville 605 North Main Street is where they are located you can give them a call for carry out orders that number is 618-855-9007. Well, the Collinsville Cahawks got their season started yesterday, and they come in with a record of 1-0 and under their fourth-year head coach, Brett Swip, who now carries with him a record of 40-54. and For New Trier, this is their season opener, so no record to speak of. They are head coached by Mike Napoleon, 
who is in his 27th year as the head coach at New Trier High School and has a record of 708 wins, 251 losses. Well, the Cavs kicked off their season yesterday afternoon on the JV field at the District 7 Sports Complex in Edwardsville with a 3-0 storm-shortened five-inning win over the Oswego Wolves. Senior Mizzou recruit, recruit Ethan Bagwell started on the mound, picked up the win with four innings of work and helped out at the plate with a two-run home run in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two batters later, senior Blaine Martinez went yard for the third and final run of that game for Collinsville. The Cowks got a uh, bit of revenge over the Wolves after Oswego beat the Cahawks last year 11-1. That game took place at Blazer Field in O'Fallon. Collinsville ended up going 16-15 and last year, a season that saw the Cahawks win 9 of 11 games from the last week of March to mid-April a season ago. After that impressive stretch, Collinsville ended up falling off a bit and then went 6-11 and the rest of the way and then got knocked out of the playoffs in a hard-fought 5-4 loss in the uh, regional championship game at Edwardsville against the host Tigers. Edwardsville, uh, in case you didn't know, won the 4A championship last year, and that was for the second straight season, and they have won three state championships over the last four years. As I mentioned, this is the season opener for the Trevions of New Trier High School out of Winnetka, Illinois. That is a Chicago suburb right on the banks of Lake Michigan. It's just north of downtown Chicago. The Trevians also uh, went to state in Class 4A last year and was in the state, sa state the same state semis with Edwardsville High School. And in the uh, Friday semifinal, Edwardsville beat Elmhurst 7-3, but New Trier lost their semifinal 4-0 to Brother Rice. The Trevians would uh, beat Elmhurst 9-4 in eight innings Saturday in the third-place game, while Edwardsville beat Brother Rice 6-4 in the championship game. Edwardsville and Brother Rice, by the way, hooked up yesterday. New Trier went 30-8 uh, and eight last season, and that came off in the heels of the only losing season in head coach Mike Napoleon's previous 26 years when the Trevians went 16-17 in 2022. New Trier had a uh, few win streaks last season, seven games, six games, and two five-game streaks. So this is a uh, team that uh, deserves a lot of respect. All right, had a chance just a little while ago, actually a long time ago, to catch up with uh, Collinsville head coach Brett Swip, and we'll pass that conversation on to you next as the LC's Pub pregame show continues here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville, just blocks from Collinsville High School. LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans' pub of choice. CUSD 10 residents have an opportunity to improve our schools without increasing the property tax rate by voting yes on March 19th. The Zero Rate Change Ballot Initiative will provide funds to improve school safety and security, upgrade heating and cooling equipment, and make facilities more accessible to disabled students, staff, and visitors. For more information, visit yesforsaferschools.org. This message was brought to you by the Citizens for Safer Schools. Vote yes for the Unit 10 Ballot Initiative. Financial investments are very important. But so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Jason Regg, your Benjamin F. Edwards financial advisor, understands this. That's why Jason Regg is a proud supporter of your Collinsville Cahawks and the Cahawks Sports Network, as well as the Cahawks Educator of the Month Award. For all of your investment needs, see financial advisor and investment vice president Jason Regg at the Benjamin F. Edwards office in Collinsville, located at 1008 Vandalia Street. Or call Jason Regg at 618-223-5215 or visit BenjaminFEdwards.com. Benjamin F. Edwards, member SIPC. 
Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cahawk alums. Located at 1966 Vandalia, Collinsville Barbecue Supply is your one-of-a-kind barbecue headquarters that focuses on everything barbecue and cooking. Providing the best American-made barbecue grills, in-person class instruction, smokers, rubs, sauces, accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts, including an in-house chef and pit master. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning sauces and rubs that supports our nation's first responder and military organizations that focus on the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by. See the guys at Collinsville Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of the four-time world champion Patriot Sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at CollinsvilleBarbecue.com or call 618-855-8855. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans' pub of choice. And we welcome you back into the LC's Pub pregame show here on the Cahawks Sports Network. We're in Soje for a little baseball action as your Collinsville Cahawks get ready to take on the team from Winnetka, Illinois, New Trier High School. And joining us now is fourth-year Collinsville head coach Brett Swift. Let's uh, talk a little old baseball before we talk a little bit of new baseball. I know that you went to the uh, Cahawk Hall of Fame induction ceremonies last month and got to watch Ken Oberkfell be inducted. I thought it was very, very cool because, you know, we personally know the, uh, the young man. So uh, that was very nice. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you see all the pedigree that's come through our community. And uh, Ken's a great example of that. Um, I think probably the most impactful thing for me was just, you know, I've watched him on TV, watched him play so many games. And then uh, my first year as a head coach, he's sitting up in Fletcher Field press box, you know, talking about the importance of the fundamentals of the game and the importance to play the game the right way and really giving back to the community. I know everybody used to talk about how much they love listening to you two together talk. And so, I mean, not only do we have amazing pedigree that comes out of the community, but we also have people that give back. And, uh, you know, and last night we had some scouts at our game um, watching watching some of our players, and they were saying, man, I feel like I've been to council before to watch people. And I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, Tanner Houck, and, you know, start naming names, and they're like, yeah, yeah, you know. And so it's it's really neat to see um, every sport and even the academics and uh, all, the, all the professional excellence that's in our uh, community. Yeah, there's some pretty smart people in that room, that's for sure. All right, uh, your team this year appears to be a, a little loaded, man. You guys got that vaunted class of uh, 2024 now seniors and there's a ton of talent on this team and a lot of promise for a good 2024 season give me your outlook yeah i mean they're they're close that's the most important thing first off is they've been together since they were eight nine ten years old you know and they've uh, a lot of good athletes who've kind of had their eye on the prize which is if we can uh be a close group of friends teammates ball players, you know, then we're going to have a, a good four years together in high school. And that's really been the case. You know, they're um, from their freshman year, they, you know, I think they were 15 and five or 17 and five, something of that nature. And they just kind of continue to grow in our program and make a big impact. And now it's really reverberating down to the younger ages. You know, I mean, we have a couple freshmen that are playing up at the varsity level now. We have, you know, I mean, we'll have kids coming in in the next few years that are going to be impactful. So, it's a, you know, you people watch, people watch. And when you have a class like the 24s that do it the right way, their families do it the right way, um, people watch and see, you know, what that kind of looks like and try to mimic it. And it's it's definitely, they've definitely helped leave a mark on Chaos Baseball. 11 24s on your team this year, and seven of them are uh, heading off to the next level to play some baseball in college. So that's kind of cool. 
Yeah, they're they're still getting better. And actually, I would imagine that even some of the ones that haven't quite decided yet, uh, they're still getting looked at too. And um, and I would say that they're not even they're not even done growing. I mean, they're they're going to be impactful players in college. So they got even more in the tank. And that's really what we're trying to get them to not settle. Don't just, you know, sit kind of at where you're at in your current level. Just keep growing and keep getting better. And, and they're really buying into that. All right, you guys got your uh, season kicked off yesterday with a game at the Edwardsville Sports Complex against Oswego. I know it got shortened a little bit because of all the storms in the area, but your thoughts on your 3 to nothing win yesterday? Yeah, it was a nice ball game. Started with two good, mature pitchers, you know, uh, Bagwell on our side and uh, um, the Tickle kid, I think that's his last name on their side. Uh, he's a real mature pitcher as well, so mixing up pitches, um, you know, keeping hitters off balance. So it was a, it was a really tight ball game. Um, we had to kind of keep grinding. Um, Ethan was was awesome, you know, and not only like did he pitch well, right? He had seven strikeouts or whatever it was, but like he also, of course, has a lot of you know scouts and people following him that it really makes like a fishbowl type of feel, you know, where there's eyes on you, you know, people are watching your every move, how you warm up, and he is just this off season, he's really worked on um, just his approach, his maturity, his preparation. And he's he did a great job, and I really, frankly, all of our guys did. You know, we talked about that. It's gonna be there's there's no more real hiding anymore. Everybody kind of knows who we are. You know, we're playing the good teams, we're playing the bigger teams, we're going out of town to tournaments. Like everybody's gonna be kind of watching. Scouts are gonna be there, radar guns, video cameras. Um, we need to learn how not to get caught up in that stuff. And and I was incredibly impressed with how our guys handled that yesterday. All right, so you have one of those uh, top tier teams here. Uh, tonight in New Trier, they ended up the uh, third place winner in last year's uh, state finals tournament. Edwardsville ended up winning the whole thing. They almost uh, could have met in the uh, championship game if things would have went their way. So a new year, uh, but the, the team that you're playing tonight has big time pedigree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we we're getting the best. You know, I mean, they're and that's the great thing about this tournament is you know brother rices the new triers the teams that are in for the state championship every year they come down here they want to compete against our conference um so you know last night edwards will play brother rice today o'fallon's playing brother rice we're playing new trier edwards was playing new trier tomorrow like you know hopefully these are forecasts of what's to come down the road you know sort of a shame that we got to beat up on each other a little bit down here in the conference and we can't send more than one team up um but you know, they know that whoever comes out of our conference and our regional and our sectional is going to give them a run for their money. And that's why these preseason games are so cool. You know, they have five Division One guys who are going on to the next level to play at a very high level. Um, very large roster, very large pedigree. They've won national, or excuse me, state championships before. Our guys want that. That's what we've been working towards is to get the respect to get put against those teams so that we can see where we're at. We can work on where we're at. And ultimately, that's our goal is to be there. Thanks for the visit, Coach. Good luck tonight. Todd, we love when you're here. Appreciate you. That is Brett Swift, your fourth-year Collinsville Kayhawk baseball head coach. We'll take a break here on the LC's Pub pregame show. Starting lineups coming your way next on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub. 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from All Pro Tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans, pub of choice. And once again, we welcome you back to GCS Ballpark here in Soje. Todd Duke is my name. Chris Kettler is on the other microphone, and uh, we are... Uh, going to go real quick here because apparently they do not announce the starting lineups for both sides. They do not play a national anthem, so we are just about ready to go. And that is Justin Wood on the mound for New Trier. And Justin Wood last year had a 2.29 earned run average, went 5-2 and two in 10 games pitched for the Treverians. And Collinsville is the visiting team here tonight, so Collinsville will get to come to the plate first. And Carter Harrington 
will lead things off and play third base. Chris Alcorn will be on the mound for Collinsville in the next half inning. He bats second. Adam Bovinette bats number in the three spot and plays first base. Ethan Bagwell is playing designated hitter tonight for this contest. He bats fourth. Bryce Lemp bats fifth and plays center field as Wood is ready to go with Carter Harrington and the first pitch is outside. After Lemp, Blaine Martinez plays shortstop and bats sixth. Carson Perrell plays in right field and Blatt bats seventh. Jace Madura at second base bats eighth and Darren Pinnell in left field and he is batting ninth and two quick pitches out of the strike zone here to Carter Harrington and Harrington last year batted 307 with one home run 17 runs batted in and looks at one high and is ahead of the count three and zero. Oh. Woods all over the place first one way outside and low the next one down in the turf that one's up and high and the 3-0 pitch to Harrington on the way. He takes all the way and takes ball four. So a four-pitch walk will put Carter Harrington on first base for Collinsville. That's how this one gets going. We are glad that you are with us here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Hope you all enjoy it. We're a little late in getting things started, but nevertheless, here we are. And Collinsville with a runner on first base already. And that will bring up Chris Alcorn, today's pitcher, the left-hander is uh, going to be going to uh, Lindenwood University. Had a walk and scored on Bagwell's two-run home run yesterday, and there's the first pitch from Justin Wood that makes it over the strike zone. And for Chris Alcorn last year, he batted 357 with a couple of home runs, 12 runs batted in. We'll set the defense for the team from Nutrier in just a moment here as the righty Wood pitches another one. That one's a little high, one and one. Delkin Spinner is in left field. Aiden Nolan is in center field. Ben Toft is in right field. Sam Nigro is at third base. James Nov Novakovic is the shortstop. Caden Carpenter is at second base. Trey Myers is at first. Justin Wood we told you about on the mound. And behind the plate doing the catching is Jake Bentavania. As Alcorn takes another strike, he is now in a 1-2 hole with Carter Harrington on at first base. Collinsville stole 103 bases last season. Only caught 14 times, so this team not afraid to run. Here's the next pitch. That one's outside and a low, and two and two. Quick throw over to first base, and Harrington is back in there safely. Yeah, he took quite a lead off there, and then as the pitch was down in the dirt, started towards second base just a little bit, got back in time. He's down there via the walk by Justin Wood on four straight pitches. Wood has since settled down a little bit, and he's got a couple of strikes in there to Alcorn. Here's the 2-2 pitch. And he looked at Cole at third strike. So one walk and one strikeout for Wood. And that will bring up first baseman Adam Bovinet. Uh, last pitch to Alcorn was probably the best one. Just couldn't pull the trigger on it. Bovinet last year batted 342, one home run, 15 runs batted in. He's up there from the left side as well. Harrington still at first base. He has his lead. Here's the pitch and a screamer down the third base side, but that's into the netting. And a foul ball, 0 oh and 1. Collinsville out there in the dark jerseys. I know it's far away and it's a little blurry because my webcam seems to be focusing on the rooftop right in front of us. So everything out in the field of play is a uh, just a little fuzzy. So just so you know, Collinsville has the dark jerseys on. New Trier, they are all dressed in white. over to first base and Harrington back in there in time. Now he's on the run, swinging a shot right off the pitcher's glove. Harrington's going to be safe and then the shortstop and the second baseman kind of run into each other so safe at first base is going to be Adam Bovinet and Collinsville will have runners on first and second. Nutrier probably would have had some kind of play on it if Wood didn't get his glove up in on it. It was going up the middle. Alcorn hitting a second might have been safe anyway but they might have at least had a play on Bovinet. Yep, we'll go ahead and give him a hit on that one because I think even if the two players wouldn't have ran into each other, there wouldn't have been enough time. So runners on first and second here is Ethan Bagwell had the big two-run home run in yesterday's game. And the first pitch is over his head. Throw down to second base, and Harrington is back in there safely with a head first slide. All turf field. So the brown you see is not actual dirt. That's turf also. Yeah, with all the rain we had last night, helps that – we're playing on turf. Otherwise, might not have been playing. They've been playing games here all day. This is the fourth game of the day here today at Grizzly Stadium. Yep. Bagwell swings and launches a home run if it would have stayed fair, but that is well foul. 
And well over the uh, building they have out there down the third baseline. So he got enough of it, but just couldn't straighten it out. One and one. Nobody's out there to see him pitch yet yesterday, but <clears throat> made him happy there with his bat. Hit a home run and got quite a bat also. Limp waits on deck, but right now it's up to Bagwell, and Bagwell fouls one at the plate, and that's going to roll across the line. I think it hit was probably foul to begin with. Yeah, hit him in the box. It doesn't matter where it rolls. So one ball, two strikes to the Mizzou recruit, Ethan Bagwell, playing the role of designated hitter here in this contest. Bovinette's at first base, Harrington's at second base, one out in the inning. We're just underway here in the top of the first. Scheduled for seven. Bagwell digs back in from the right side. Woods steps off. Catcher wanted to go back through the signs there. He told him to step off. Woods looks in once again. From the stretch, he fires, and another foul ball. This one straight back to the screen. This is like the uh, third or fourth game I think I've done from GCS. Yeah, KX have been playing here off and on throughout the years. This place has been here about 20-something years. Woods ready with a 1-2 to Bagwell. And here it is. Swinging a shot down the line. That one's got a chance to stay fair, and it just went foul. Just past the 318 mark next to the foul pole out there in right, or excuse me, left field. I believe it's 301 down the first baseline, but there are no signs for the rest of the field, so your guess is as good as mine. I would imagine probably somewhere around 325 to straightaway center field. That pitch just hung up there a bit, and I'd like to see Bagwell just wait another half second there for swinging at that one. Yeah. Could have got that down in the corner. Scored at least one run. As it was, just another long strike. So Bagwell will come back into the box. Bovinette leads at first. Harrington at second. Woods. Takes a long time to peer into his catcher for the signs. Now he has it. And working from the stretch once again, brings it in, and another pop fly. This one's going to stay on the infield, and it's going to be caught by Sam Nigro at third base for the second out of the inning. And now it's up to Bryce Limp to send any runs home if he so chooses to do so. Bryce last year batted 282, led the team in home runs with six, and knocked in 24 runs. Yeah, it seemed like he was always hitting a home run every, every time I checked him out or went to a few games. He was hitting a lot of home runs, six of them last year. So limp from the left side. Already with the righty Woods. Or Wood. No S on the end of that name. Throw down to second base is going to go. Oh, man, that was a nice play by the second baseman, Caden Carpenter. Or else that one was going to sail into the outfield, and it would have been up to Aiden Nolan to play that one. So a nice heads-up play there by Carpenter, the second baseman for New Trier. 1-0 the count to Mr. Bryce Limp, who will play center field here tonight. Wood checks on Harrington, brings it home, and a pitch that stays high, one ball. Excuse me, 2-0 the count. Two outs, two runners on. And Limp ready again. This time, Wood does check on Harrington. A couple of times he's been in that stretch. He hasn't even bothered to check on the runners. This one's outside. That's a lot of Alcorn to get some good leads. Yeah. 3-0 and the count to Bryce Limp. Limp looking for something to hit here if he's got the green light. And the pitch. Swinging and a miss. He did have the green light on that one. He swung right through it. 3-1. and one. Wood peers into his catcher, Bintavania. Runners have their leads. And the 3-1 pitch on the way, and another swing and a miss. Now it's a full count to Bryce Limp. 
Blaine Martinez, who hit a solo home run in yesterday's win over Oswego, waits on deck. Limp would like to give him a chance to bat here. Bryce ready. Wood is also ready. Here comes the payoff pitch and a foul back to the screen. Lacey got a piece of that one. Yeah, it came back in on him there. He had to fight that one off. Doesn't look like there's much wind out there. The flag ain't doing a It was windy earlier. So much. Yeah, when he was down there earlier, that wind was whipping through. Wood is ready with another 3-2 pitch to limp. Here it is, swinging a high, sky-high fly ball. This one is twisting is. the first baseman around, but he doesn't have to worry about it, it wasn't because his. Ben Toft out in right field pulled down that one for the catch and the out, and that is the way that the first inning comes to a close. Well, the top of the first anyway. We will head to the bottom of one, and no score so far between Collinsville and New Trier, and we'll be back with the first at bat of the day for the Trevions after a timeout here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Looking for a more upscale place to have a few drinks and some great food? Look no further than the Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville. Come inside for some one-of-a-kind crafted cocktails and some elevated bar food that highlights fresh ingredients. Then, try your luck in the private slot machine room. And don't forget to check out the Speakeasy sister company, Plan Shop Live, just three doors down. Plan Shop Live is a health-focused lunch cafe open Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 3. Speakeasy Parlor, 2713 North Center Street in Maryville. Open seven days a week with happy hour specials during the week from 5 to 7 p.m. Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville, 618-205-3540. Once again, welcome back to GCS Ballpark here in Soje. Todd Duke and Chris Kettler are along with you, and we're glad that you are with us. We appreciate you joining us here on the Cahawk Sports Network, as usual. And let's get you set for Nutrier's first at bat. They will lead things off with Ben Toft. He will lead off and play right field. Aiden Nolan plays center field and bat second. Trey Myers is the first baseman and bats third. In the cleanup spot is Delkin Spinner, who plays left field. Max Miller is the DH tonight for New Trier, and he is going to be batting for the pitcher, Justin Wood. James Novakovic is the shortstop. He bats in the sixth spot. Jake Bentavina is the catcher who bats seventh. Caden Carpenter bats eighth and plays second base, and Sam Nigro is batting ninth and playing third base. Defensively for your Collinsville Cahawks, Darren Pinnell is in left field. Bryce Limp is in center field. Carson Perrell in right field. Carter Harrington at third base, Blaine Martinez at shortstop, Jace Madura at second base, Adam Bovinet at first base, Chris Alcorn is on the mound, and Roman Pomerantz is behind the plate doing the catching. Last year for Chris Alcorn, he played in 10 games, started eight of them, had one complete game. He went two and four with an earned run average of 4.47, and Alcorn had 35 walks to go along with 42 strikeouts last year, and the lefty delivers a strike to Ben Toft, and after a first pitch ball, the count is one and one. Ben Toft. Batted 235 last year, eight RBIs and eight runs scored, and has another one. That's a strike in there from Alcorn. Lefty versus lefty here. Alcorn versus Ben Toff, the right fielder. Looking for something to drive. Alcorn would like to sit him down. And there he goes, uh, called third strike. And that's the way that the bottom of the first gets underway with a strikeout of Ben Toff from Chris Alcorn. And that'll bring up Aiden Nolan, the center fielder. And Nolan batted 317 last year with 17 runs batted in and 18 runs scored. He stands in from the right side. Alcorn's ready with the next pitch and a swing and a miss. Mm. Just mowing it in there. Great, great strikeout pitch, the pitch before. Alcorn nods his head yes and brings home another. Swing and a foul ball. That's up against the netting here down the first base side and Alcorn's ahead in the count 0-2. Two batters, gets ahead of both. That's the key, man. You can't get another strikeout. That is the key to good pitching is to get ahead of the batters. 
Oh, two pitch on the way. Swing and a ball that popped out of the glove and he is out after Pomerantz picked up the ball and tagged out the runner. I don't even think the runner even started over to first base. Not more than a step or so. Yeah. He was tagged out. So two strikeouts, one looking, one swinging, and that will bring up Trey Myers, the first baseman. Myers did not play last year, I guess, unless his name's Max and they call him Trey. David Myers. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, Max next to David. First pitch misses from Alcorn. Alcorn likes to work quickly, and here comes the next. This one's inside. We'll see how he responds now. First battery falls behind their number three batter. Clean up guy, Delkin Spinner. Left fielder waits on deck. 2-0 pitch coming from Alcorn. It's on the way, and that one misses as well. So after back-to-back -back strikeouts, Alcorn falls behind to the first baseman, Trey Myers, 3-0. Alcorn brings one and a four-pitch walk. Nothing going for him in that, for that at bat. Four pitches, four balls. See how he gets, does Spinner here, the uh, cleanup hitter for Trevins. Delkin Spinner. 227 batter last year, 10 runs batted in, five runs scored. If they're looking for more, more from him out of that if he's going to be batting cleanup this yeah, year. Yeah, you'd think. Here's the pitch, and that one's also down and low. So Alcorn, after starting off throwing BBs up there, is uh, kind of ran into a little trouble missing the zone here. Want to know the count? Runner on first base. We're in the bottom of the first. Collinsville could not score. And there's one that's called strike. One and one. Alcorn looks into Pomerantz, has his sign, works from the stretch, checks on his runner at first base and brings it home. A little bit low. You know I'm going to have to stop myself from saying ball in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, say turf. It's ball in the turf. It's all a turf field Ball here. in the fake dirt. That's what we're working on getting in Collinsville at some point. Yeah. Some turf <clears throat> fields for our teams. So we'll get real used to it by then. Alcorn with a 2-1 count. Swinging a foul ball back to the screen. Down the first base side. And the count now 2-2. Two and two. two outs, runner on first base. We're in the bottom of the first. No score as of yet between Collinsville and New Trier High School. New Trier, the Trier part is spelled like it looks like Trier, T-R-I-E-R, -E but it's pronounced Trier. From Winnetka, Illinois. Yep, that's up on the North Shore there, affluent area. I was looking Chicago. at it on the map, man. I'm thinking you can probably stand on top of their school and see Lake Michigan. Might be able to see it from a window, depending on how tall the school is. I don't know. 2-2, two -two and Alcorn steps off. Alcorn, once again, works from the stretch. Above the net, holds the runner on. Runner goes. Here's the pitch. Swinging a foul ball. Everybody will have to go back to where they were. Goes over that picnic area and onto that metal bleacher area. Grizzly season doesn't get underway until May the 10th. Their home opener is May 17th. I think, no, May 16th maybe. I think it's the uh, day before Collinsville's last regular season game. He had started late in the Frontier League. Yeah, it's a summer league. They wrap it up by Labor Day, around Labor Day. Another 2-2 pitch from Alcorn. Looks over at his runner, brings it home, and that one is low, and the runner goes, and the throw is going to be late. And down to second base is Trey Myers with a stolen base. He wasn't really going with the pitch or anything. Just once the ball was down in the dirt. Well, see, I almost hit in dirt. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it's going to be hard to say that, isn't it? Down in the turf, uh, and Pomerantz didn't come up with it too cleanly. So now a full count to the cleanup man, Delkin Spinner. And Alcorn is ready to deliver. Swinging a high fly ball. 
Coming in for it is Bryce Limp, and Limp camps underneath it and has it for out number three. So that is the way the first inning comes to a close with a big, long fly out. And see, so, you know, I'm going to do this again. Top of the second. Thank you, computer. We will head to the top of the second as my computer is finally right, and we will tell you all about the top of the second after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. We love to have you come work for the city of Collinsville. We have many positions available from seasonal jobs to full-time opportunities in many of our departments. From police and fire to Gateway Center, parks and recreation and City Hall. Our employees enjoy great benefits like comprehensive medical plans, paid time off, tuition reimbursement and more. Visit the city's website, collinsvilleil.org to apply and learn more about working for the city of Collinsville. No one likes a dirty house. It's work that almost no one wants to do. Why not get someone to do that work for you? Kara Gray with Rags to Riches Cleaning Service would love to take that task off your to-do list. Kara is a homegrown Collegeville High School graduate and the owner of Rags to Riches. From floors to ceilings, from baseboards to light fixtures, Rags to Riches can clean them all. No job is too big or too small. Call Kara Gray at Rags to Riches Cleaning Service to schedule a free estimate today at 618-618. 979-9634 or visit Rags to Riches Cleaning Service on Facebook. Todd Duke, Chris Kettler back with you from GCS Ballpark here in Soje. Collinsville comes to bat in the top of the second inning and it will be Blaine Martinez, Carson Peril, and Jace Madura here in the second inning. If anyone can get on, the number nine hitter in the order and Darren Pinnell will have a chance to bat. Wood. The righty back to work, and the first pitch to Martinez is a called strike on the outside corner. Told you about Martinez and his home run yesterday. Last year, 348 hitter was Blaine Martinez. Had one home run and five runs batted in. Next pitch, swing and a high fly ball. This one's going out to right field, and a catch by the right fielder, Ben Toft, is the first out here in inning number two. How much foul space there? The foul line's right there, and then the Bleachers are right there. If you can get it down in that corner there, it's probably going to be fair. Yeah. Got a little part of the bleachers that jettisons out there down that line. Basically on both sides. Yeah, except for there's no bleachers over here on the uh, left field side, just a grass area for the kids to play. Swinging a high fly ball on the infield from Carson Peril, and this time Sam Nigro makes the catch, so two quick outs. And Nigro and Toft have made both of the defensive plays a pop up on the infield from Bagwell's bat to Nigro back in the first and a fly out by Bryce Limp to Toft in the uh, to end the first inning. And then Martinez flies out to Toft and then Peril pops up to Nigro. Here is Jace Madura. Madura looks at one on the outside corner of the plate. Jace, second baseman from the right-hand side, and another called strike. So Wood has uh, settled down a little bit after a four-pitch walk and a base hit that he gave up in the first inning. And this one's a little low. Sometimes some of them pitches is when you got to jump on them early before they get their feet down and they get settled in. Especially the first game of the year for these guys. Off-speed pitch, called strike three, and Madura is down on strikes, and that's a quick one, two, three inning for Collinsville at the plate. So we will head now to the bottom half of the second inning. And New Trier coming back up to the plate real quick like. We'll be back to tell you all about it here in just a moment on the Kayhawk Sports Network. All Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small. And they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, Quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent service staff. Did we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. And of course, All Pro Tees is your destination for everything Collinsville Cayhawks. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville at 2240 South Morrison Avenue. Online at allprotees.com. Right across the street from Kayhawk Stadium. All Pro Tees, 618-344-2200.
Once again, we welcome you back here to GCS Ballpark in Soje. Beautiful Soje, Illinois, population 249. That's what the sign says right out in front of the stadium. Leading things off here is Max Miller, the DH. He'll face Chris Alcorn. Miller batted 417 last year with six runs batted in. You ever met anybody that lives in Soche? No, I, I have in not. In all my life. No. Nope. I've never met anybody that lives in Soche. Does Rick Soje even live in Soje? Yeah, it's a mansion right back. Oh, okay. There's a, yeah. So I guess if I would ever meet him. Yeah. Middle of the order here for Nutrier. D.H. Max Miller, James Novakovic, the shortstop, and Jake Bentavenia, the catcher, all do up here in this inning. There's a strike called. Yeah. Good pitch there. Caught the, caught the corner. Miller wasn't going to swing at that one. Alcorn, he's ready with the next delivery, and here it is, and a strike called. Not sure if uh, Miller went all the way around. He checked his swing, but the umpire called it a strike anyway. One ball, two strikes to count. Alcorn, he likes to work quick. We appreciate that after a late start. This one's inside and low. Two and two. Both teams have an early game tomorrow. It's kind of bad yeah. that they got, this, got the late game tonight when they both have 10 a.m. games tomorrow. That they do. But that's what we got. Here's the next from Alcorn, up high. Collinsville taking on River Forest High School at 10 o'clock tomorrow at Blazer Park in O'Fallon. And Nutrier playing Edwardsville tomorrow at 10 a.m. Lost him. And another walk. That's two walks and two strikeouts now for Alcorn. And another base runner here for Nutrier. And that will bring up James Novakovic, the shortstop. Batted 317 last year, 12 RBIs, 21 runs scored. So Alcorn works from the stretch here early again. Throw over to first base and back in there safely is Miller. Yeah, he's not more than a step off the bag there. Just, I guess, the left hander is going to say, I see you there. <laughs> yeah. His throw over to first is going to be a little bit longer since he's way over on the third base side of the rubber. Yeah, he likes to stand over there on that edge, doesn't he? Alcorn, another throw over to first. Mike Napoleon, the head coach for Nutrier in his 27th year, got a couple of state championships under his belt for his teams back in the day, if you will. As Alcorn pitches, that one's low. Won the state championship in 2000. That's when we had uh, just A and double A. They went 35 and seven that year. And then they won the 4A state championship in 2009. They went 32 and seven. Alcorn, long look over at Miller at first place. Such a long look that Novakovic stepped out of the box. Now Alcorn works from the stretch again, brings one home. That one's right down the middle. Called strike one, one ball, one strike to count. Nobody out, runner on at first base, top of the second. No score. The lefty, Novakovic, ready to go again. Alcorn, quick throw over mm -hmm. to first base, almost took Bovinet off the bag. Yeah, that one was more to Bovinet's left than he would have liked. Definitely not towards the bag side. Well, Alcorn worrying about Miller over there at first base. Here's the next pitch to the batter, swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes to count. Of course, they got that rule now in the major leagues. You can only check on the runner so many times yeah. or something. Yeah. You only get 18 seconds with runners on base now to pitch. Instead of 20 that they had last year. Changing the rules all the time they are in Major League Baseball. Two and two the count. To Novakovic. Cardinals were losing to the Marlins last I checked. Not sure if that game went final or not. I know they were in the ninth. Got about be done. Yeah, you'd think. And he went around and 
Down on strikes goes Novakovic. Third strike out of the game for Alcorn. Cardinals lost eight to four to the Marlins. Eight to four. And here is Jake Bentavania, the catcher for New Trier. He bats from the right side. Alcorn continues to work from the stretch. And the pitch. I like it better when there's no one on base. Alcorn works a lot quicker. Yeah, he's really staring down the runner there. Really wants to keep him from doing anything. Not sure if uh, Mr. Miller is known for stealing bases or not, but Alcorn sure is paying a lot of attention to him. 2-0 and after that pitch misses low. Already some action down New Trier's way in the bullpen there. I don't know if they're going to try to pitch a few different guys today. Yeah, their first game of the year, they might. Depending on what they're trying to get out of these games down here this weekend. And when they head back up north, who knows how the weather's going to be yeah. up there, definitely. And even down here next week, it's supposed to be cold. Well, this one that one goes away. all the way back to the screen and took a big bounce off of that wall back there, but not a big enough bounce for Pomerantz to do anything with it. And a wild pitch will send Miller down to second base. Here now maybe Alcorn won't worry about the runner as much. He's not going to be too much in his line of sight now unless he yeah. looks back at him. But Three and one count against Bentavania, the catcher. Alcorn nods his head yes to the sign. Does look over his left shoulder at the runner. Brings one home and high and outside. That's two walks and now runners on first and second here for New Trier. So three walks and three strikeouts for Alcorn so far in a very short amount of time. 13 goes over there to run at first. That would be Trier. Zach Perchick. Perchick, the runner. And the batter, and that would be Caden Carpenter, the second baseman. Carpenter didn't have many stats last year. I believe he was a freshman. So uh, he did not get any varsity time last year. Here's the pitch from Alcorn, swing and a miss. We're in the bottom of the second. No score yet between Collinsville and New Trier. But New Trier is threatening here. They got runners on first and second and only one out. Alcorn ready with another for Carpenter. Here it comes. He bunts. Back to the pitcher's mound, and the play over to first base is in time for out number two. Both runners move up on the sacrifice by Carpenter. Trier settling for just moving the runners over. Putting them in, in scoring position here, see if uh, the next batter can't come through. That would be Sam Nigro. He is the number nine hitter, the third baseman. Interesting to set it up there for the nine hitter. Yeah. 217 batter last year. Nine runs scored, four runs batted in. Alcorn would like to get him to end the inning. There's a nice off-speed delivery that's in there for a strike. Pops out of the glove of Pomerantz, but they call it a, they call it a ball? Huh? All right. Alcorn abandons the stretch back to his windup. And the pitch inside. Alcorn he needs to worry about the batter now that the runners are out of his view for the most part. Doesn't even check on the runners at this point. Here's the pitch. Swinging a high fly ball. Center fielder Bryce Slimp is on the move to his right and hauls it in for the catch. So no damage done. And we will now move to the top of the third inning. This computer, I tell you what. 
this little program I have here, I change sides and it goes backwards instead of forwards. So we head to the top of the third inning and no score yet. Collinsville comes up to the plate after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a new place to catch the game with cold drinks and great food? Look no further than 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville. 1101 Bar and Grill features pizza, burgers, wraps, and salads, plus seven large screen TVs to catch the latest Kayhawk games and all the pro sports across the spectrum, plus all the college football and basketball you can handle. 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville, 1101 Caseyville Road, right across the street from Kayhawk Stadium. Call 1101 Bar and Grill for carryout orders at 618-223-1332. Already a new pitcher for Nutrier as they bring in Henry Conniff, the junior. And that's going to do it for Justin Wood. Probably want to give their guy some work. Yeah, I'll probably get some guys some work here. Uh, you know, first game here, and they're going to get down here and get a chance to play when they go back up north. I mean, the weather here next week doesn't look too good in the early part of the week, so you never know what you can get into up around Chicago. So get some guys some yeah, pitching on, time. I and went on vacation up in Chicago in the middle of June, and it was still cold. Yeah, that's why. Uh, they do have a game tomorrow against Edwardsville, though, so yeah, they're, they're going to save here. some pitchers. Yeah, but they probably want to get some work from as many guys as possible. Darren Pinnell is the only Kayhawk batter that has not had a chance at the plate yet, so he will lead things off. Darren, of course, going to McKendry, but he's not going there for baseball. He's going there for football. Collinsville's quarterback last year. Yeah, he was the quarterback and played on defense. He'll be playing defense. Yep, he's going to be a defensive back at McKendry. Defensive back at McKendry. So he will lead things off here, and then it'll be back to the top of the order. Carter Harrington and Chris Alcorn, if anyone can get on. Adam Bovinet with a chance to pitch. Conniff, also a righty. And he's ready to go. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a called strike. Nothing but zeros on the board for Collinsville and Nutrier through two innings of work. We're in the top of the third, no score. And Pinnell looks for the next from Conniff. Here it is. It's outside and low, rolls all the way back to the screen. That'll even things out at one and one. Pinnell awaits that one one from Conniff. And the righty delivers. Ooh. Just said that one had to just miss. It, yeah. Pitcher Look, just coming in. good from this angle. Pitcher just coming in. Definitely going to want that one. Two and one. Big gap in right center field for Pinnell. He can take one the other way. He'll be running for days. That one almost hit him. Three and one. Good reflexes to jump out of the way of that one. Well, you know, we already know he's got good reflexes. 3-1 pitch from Conniff to Pinnell. Is on the way. Foul back to the screen. Full count. Fourth width. The what? (laughs) On the way, fourth width. I've been watching Blue Bloods. I started a new series because for some reason or another, everything was a repeat last week, and I was kind of bored, so I started watching Blue Bloods, and they used the word forthwith a lot in that show. And that one's high, and Pinnell takes a walk. I don't even know if I know that word. <laughs> okay. That means do it now. Do it now, so Pinnell does it now and walks, and Harrington will come back up for his second plate appearance. That is the first walk issued by Conniff. Justin Wood issued a uh, walk, had a strikeout, gave up a base hit. In his couple of innings of work. And 
Carter Harrington received the first walk back in the first inning. We're in the top of the third now. Collinsville seeing if they can scratch some runs across over to first base, and Pinnell is back in there safely. Interesting move there over to first. Didn't fool Pinnell too much. Harrington wants something to drive here. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second base, not in time. And Pinnell is in there with a stolen base. Nice throw, but plenty of speed there from Pinnell. Gets up ready to shake the dust off him, but there ain't going to be none. <laughs> no. Uniforms will stay mostly clean out here. So runner at second base and no one out. Sure Harrington. <clears throat> sure will be some dusty days out of Fletcher Field later in the year. I'm sure. Tell you what, man. Delkin Spinner playing way off the line out there in left field. If Harrington can turn on one and get that down the line, he'll be running for days. That's quite a gap to left. There's a bunt both. out front, and that's going to get Pinnell to third, and not even a throw by Conniff because Harrington had those wheels a-going, and that turns into an infield hit. Yeah, and he maybe a smart move to eat that one, not throw it, maybe make something wild or something that gets away from first baseman, and Pinnell could maybe run around and score. Sets up nicely here for next Kayok batter, Alcorn. Chris Alcorn will come up with runners on the corners and no one out. Alcorn got caught looking at a third strike his first time up. Different pitcher, different look. Conniff works from the stretch. Looks over his left shoulder at first base. Swing and a shot to Bay. It's a base hit through the hole between third and short. Collinsville up front, one to nothing as Darren Pinnell comes in to score. Nice hit the other way there from the left-handed batter. Right there between second and third in the shortstop area. But shortstop was a few extra steps over to his left, closer to second base. Bovinette will come in here, but uh, Alcorn will get a runner for him. That's Cameron Kraus. Cameron Kraus, the senior, will come in, do a little running for the pitcher. And Adam Bovinette, who singled his first time up. We'll get another opportunity to do the same thing here. One to nothing in favor of Collinsville. Top of the third, no one out. Still have runners on first and second. Conniff from the stretch once again. Brings it home. Nice pitch. I think Bovinette just wanted to see what he had. Bagwell waits on deck. Runners on first and second here for Collinsville. Up to Adam Bovinette. Keep the line moving. Conniff brings it home. Swinging a bouncer to the third baseman. Nigro is going to step on third, throw over to first base, and that is not in time. So they get the lead runner, but still runners at first and second, but now with one out. Third baseman just stepped on the third base bag. Had to rush his throw a little bit. Enough speed there from Bovinette. Throw pulled the first baseman off the bag, but he was out there in time anyway. And see what they're going to do with Bagwell up now. So Bagwell bats with one out. He was close. Yeah. Driving something last time against the last pitcher. And there's a little slow roller that's going to get to the second baseman. His only throw is going to be to first, so it moves the runners up. But Bagwell probably would like to have that pitch back. Yeah, just hit that off the end of the bat. Slow roller to second. Not what he wanted there. Look for something to drive there, but that definitely didn't happen. Me up to Bryce. And Bryce Limp flew out to the right fielder, Ben Toft, his first time up. Conniff with runners at second and third. Two outs, one run already home. Here's the pitch inside. That one cutting inside. Nearly hit Limp. Bryce going to St. Charles Community College to continue his baseball career. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss. One and one. Pitcher and catcher want to talk about it for a second or two. They were a little crossed up there. I don't think that was where the 
catcher was expecting the ball to be, but Bryce still swung through it. One ball, one strike the count to Bryce Limp. Two outs in the inning. One to nothing in favor of Collinsville. They played it a run here in the top of the third. Conniff. Ready to go. Back to the regular windup. And here's the pitch. Foul back to the screen. <clears throat> One ball, two strikes. That's the count against Lim. Count him. He's ready. Here comes the pitch. Swinging a foul ball out of play. Hope you didn't park over there. I did, but I'm like in the uh, other row, so I should be far enough out of the way that I shouldn't have to worry about that. Always got to think about those things when you're coming to a baseball or a softball game. After some of the hail we had last night, and that's uh, the last thing I need. One mm. pitch strike. Got him out. And yeah, a uh, in front of that yeah, one. Yeah, a little bit of a, I don't, I don't think he was ready to swing, but he just kind of kept it going anyway. So Almost could have cocked back again and <laughs> swung yeah. a second time, but he swung so early. Well, the inning comes to a close, but not before Collinsville plates a run. We head to the bottom of the third inning, and Collinsville now out front by a score of one to nothing. and we're back here in just a moment on the Cahawk Sports Network. Are you in need of a new mailbox to go with your new home? How about a new mailbox to replace your old one? Look no further than Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. From economy to custom, Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can create a mailbox that suits your needs. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes is licensed and insured. They use only high-quality materials and offer a satisfaction guarantee policy. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes could also make your very own axe throwing set, hanging or standing. Whether you need that axe throwing set or a new mailbox, you need Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. For more information, get a hold of Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes at 618-680-0208 or online at needanewmailbox.com. Chris Alcorn goes back out to the mound for his second inning, or excuse me, third inning worth of work. And so far, so good here for Collinsville. Kaox plated one run on two base hits in the last half inning. Darren Pinnell comes around to score and... Collinsville leads by a score of one to nothing. And they'll have the top of the order to deal with here. Ben Toft, Aiden Nolan, and Trey Myers do up to the plate here for New Trier. Ben Toft, strikeout victim his first time up. Got caught looking at the third strike from Chris Alcorn. Alcorn got into a little trouble last half inning, but got out of it. There's a pitch that's low. Kalex with three games in a row. Played yesterday, playing here tonight, play tomorrow morning. Alcorn delivers. Almost hitting. Then the only games they'll play next week are a tournament down in Tennessee. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, again, and then it'll be week after that before they really start to get into a more normal schedule. Yeah. Swinging a foul ball back to the screen off the bat of Toft. Yeah, I won't have another game until the uh, last Saturday of the month. Saturday morning against Breeze. No, I'm not going to Tennessee. Me neither. 2-0 and o pitch. Or excuse me, 2-1 and one pitch. Outside. 3-1. and one. Don't want to lose Toft and start off the inning with a walk after you just scored a run in the bottom half of your inning or the top half of the third. Alcorn trying not to do that as he delivers the next to Toft. That's in there for a called strike, three and two. Full count, Aiden Nolan, the center fielder on deck. It's comeback pitch there. Toft just let that one go by. Pretty much playing Toft straight away in the outfield. No shift at all. Here's the next pitch and a bouncing ball that's foul. Right back to the on-deck batter, Aiden Nolan. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll do it all over again. Alcorn nods his head. Yes, here comes a 3-2 pitch in the dirt, in the turf. <laughs> told you, told started, you I was going to say that. Yeah, I was started off outside and then just popped down in the turf. And they're going to, coach going to come out here and talk to uh, Alcorn. Yeah, it started off really well. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start this game off with. And since then, he's uh, gotten a little out of whack. Nobody else is down there throwing or anything. I don't know if they have a plan. They want more than one guy to pitch if necessary. Yeah, I don't know. I would imagine uh, probably Bryce Limp getting the start tomorrow. That would be my thought process. Uh, yeah, I believe that's what it, the word was, that Limp would start tomorrow against Oak Park. River Forest High School of Oak Park. Oak Park River Forest, yeah. That's going to be an early start, like you said. These two teams yeah. end up with the late game and have the early start tomorrow. Tomorrow is the daughter's 20th birthday. And uh, we got tickets to go see the Blues play on Tuesday. So Josh Roseman is going to handle the boys' volleyball season opener at home against Saxony Lutheran. I had originally had that on my schedule, but once we got the tickets to that game, I asked Zach to do it, so he's going to do that. And I'm going to do softball against Freeburg on Wednesday as Alcorn pitches, and that one, double play ball. Oh, a chance for a double play ball. Madura booted it. That's going to be an error. Yep. Madura had Taylor made double play ball there. And KX aren't going to get anything out of it. No, they are not. So instead of maybe two outs and nobody on, we have two on and nobody out. And here is Trey Myers who walked and stole the base but was stranded at second base. Collinsville, they have a body up in the bullpen. Yeah, some throwing starts down there. I'm not sure who. Too far away for me to see. You didn't bring your binoculars, did you? Oh, my binoculars stay in the booth at the yeah. stadium. I don't carry them around. Because I need them up there more than I usually do anywhere else. And I'll about, be bound to forget them. <laughs> so runners on first and second. Nobody out. Alcorn in a little trouble. Here's the pitch. And that one gets away from Pomerantz. He's going to throw to third and not in time with the tag over there was Carter Harrington. Throw was left a little high. Maybe if it was a low throw, he probably could have slid into it, but that was going to be close anyway. Neither runner was really going to go over there, but the one coming from second did go once the ball got really far away from Pomerantz. Aiden Nolan stays at first, so runners at the corners. Whoever that is throwing down there is cranking it up now and Alcorn's ready with the next, and that one also is a little bit wild. Yeah, he's getting wild now. Yeah, that's going to allow Nolan to go down to second base. So back-to-back -back pitches have hit the turf. Got to really figure out as we go along here to how to settle down with runners on base. Got out of it last inning, but... It's going to be a uh, tall task to get out of it this inning with runners at second and third and no one down. And they're just going to walk yep. uh, Myers and try to set up the force play. So an intentional walk of Myers has the bases loaded with no one out. Or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. What? Coach Swift doesn't like something. No, he doesn't. Was oh, was it? They called it a hit by pitch. About five minutes after the pitch, they called it a hit by pitch. Okay. How is the field there? No more than the guy sitting right there. I don't have any idea, yeah. man. Okay. At any rate, so the bases are loaded with no one out here for Nutrier. It's a really a jam now. Bases loaded, nobody out. Yeah. How about a uh, triple play? An Alcorn staying a little wild as that one was in the turf in front of home plate. I would almost imagine this may be the last batter that Alcorn will face. Bases loaded, no one out. 
And the 1-0 pitch on the way, and that one gets away too. Into that turf and all the way back to the screen. And three wild pitches in this inning have played it a run. That one didn't hit him. I thought when that was coming in, I thought that was going to hit the batter spinner there, but that wasn't the case. Still, only one, one run scores. Pitcher who was down there throwing has finished his throwing, throwing, and here comes Coach Swip to maybe send uh, Alcorn out of this game. 59? Is that a number? I don't have a 59. Maybe that's not the number then. <laughs> I didn't get a good look at it. Well, it's 50-something, and the only 50-something I have is Will Swip and Roman Pomerantz, and Pomerantz is catching. And Will Swip is not. <laughs> yeah, he's hurt. Here. He is. Well, Collinsville has names on the backs of their jerseys this year, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it or not. 59. Where's that lineup card? What's the na name on there? Logan Odell, not on my roster. All right, so we have a pitching change. And are they going to give him any time to warm up? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. We well, got a few pitches in there. Uh, and we'll go he's coming in mid-batter. We'll go ahead and uh, take a break then, and we'll be back after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition in Pontoon Beach provides complete commercial, industrial, and residential demolition and excavating services. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is family owned and operated by former Cahawk since 1980 and have over four decades serving the Metro East. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is your choice for quality and experienced work at a reasonable price. Schaefer is just jobs of any size, whether digging for water and sewer lines, site preparation, or building demolition. Schaefer's can do it all. Schaefer's Excavating and Demolition also sells backfill, topsoil, loam, and other materials. Licensed, bonded, and insured. From earth moving and land clearing to building and demolition and road construction to septic and sewer system work. Call the experienced crew at Schaefer Excavating and Demolition. 618-931-6237. Harold Square and Cold Harold, two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the Old Harold Brewery and Distillery, Harold Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Harold Square, a great space for Collinsville's future. And, just off the square's turf, Cold Harold, old-fashioned scooped ice cream, gelato, house-made recipes, and premium sourced product. If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Harold. Watch Collinsville grow. Harold Square and Cold Harold, two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. And once again, we welcome you back to GCS Ballpark here in Soje. My name is Todd Duke, Chris Kettler on the other microphone. And Logan Odell is going to take the mound over for Chris Alcorn. As Alcorn was taken out in with a 2-0 count against Delkin Spinner. So I guess that uh, Coach Swift had seen enough and took him out. Still in the middle of uh, taking on the new Trier left fielder. Runners on second and third. No one out. We are tied one to one. And the first pitch of Odell is popped out of the glove of Pomerantz, but not far enough for anyone to move. Well, you know that uh, Trey Myers at second base can't move unless Aiden Nolan at third base does, so not enough room for Nolan to move. And it's 3-0 and now, the count to Delkin Spinner, the left fielder who flew out to Bryce Limp to end the first inning. Pitcher and catcher talk on the mound there. This has been a long time at bat for Spinner. Sure has. Pitching change and then that. Been a long bottom of the third inning too. Odell. Looks in. And the righty brings it home. And that's right across the chest. But a called ball four. And that walk is going to belong to Alcorn. And it is the fourth walk issued by Collinsville pitching here today. And the bases are loaded still with no one out. And up to the plate comes Max Miller, the DH, who walked and was stranded at third back in the second inning. So Adele has his work cut out for him. 
All three runners on base still belong to Alcorn. Well, Alcorn, while he was in there, gave up four walks, three strikeouts, four wild pitches, and he hit a batter as well. Three wild pitches here in this inning. Odell. Pitches, swinging a foul ball. Aiden Nolan on at third, Trey Myers on at second, Delkin Spinner on at first. Nobody down here in the bottom of the third. We're tied 1-1. Odell, long look in to Pomerantz. Works from the stretch and brings the next one home. And that one's in there for a called strike three. And boy, oh boy, did Collinsville need that. Now a double play can get him out of the inning. Yeah, Odell settled down nicely after the first two pitches of the previous batter then comes roaring back. Three straight strikes. So one out, base is still loaded. Here is James Novakovic. Swinging a shot right through the right side, but Madura comes up with a nice play over to first base in time for the out. Run's going to score, but I tell you what, he saved another run from scoring because that ball goes to the outfield, and I'm thinking that Trey Myers has probably got enough speed to come around and score. Oh, yeah, the runner coming from third. Myers is going to score easily. Nice stack by, by Madura to... Uh... Snag that one on what would be the edge of the dirt if there was dirt there, um, making up for that error that has added to this inning here. So two outs, runners on second and third, and here is Jake Bentavania, and he skies one. This one's heading toward foul territory, and it's going to stay in foul territory. Just a long strike. Bentavania, the catcher. Walked and was stranded at second and his only at bat. <coughs> Try to keep the damage to a minimum. Right now, Collinsville trails two to one. You'd like to strand those two runners out there as Nutrier has already stranded three base runners tonight. Odell looks in. And Extra then time. stepping out is Bentavania. Catcher asked for that one. Odell ready. And the pitch. Swing and a little slow roller foul. 0 oh 2. Odell would love a strikeout. Yeah, we can come in here and get two strikeouts. Definitely has done his job. Odell ready to go again. Checks on both of his runners and from the stretch, brings it home. Swinging a little bouncing ball over Odell Double. to the shortstop Martinez and not in time, another run will score. That was a high bounding ball off of that turf and it stayed high long enough that Ventavania beat out the throw from Blaine Martinez. Hung up there long enough there for the runner to get down in time. Good throw by Martinez. Fortunately, the third run does come in. So runners on the corners. Another run in, three to one in favor of Nutrier. And here is Caden Carpenter who grounded out to the pitcher, Chris Alcorn, back in the second. And now pitcher and catcher want to talk about it. Second time he's went out there to talk to him, and then I think during that last at bat, catcher had asked for time and went back over the signs. I think they've gotten on the same page just on everything just yet. That's why I was hoping for a strikeout, man. One of those seeing eye infield ground balls that just took a big old bounce. Wasn't anything Odell could do about it. It was way over his head, and Blaine Martinez did exactly what he needed to do. Got it on the short hop, but it stayed up in the air so long on the bounce that Bentavania beat it out at first. Odell, back to work. Runners on the corners and two outs. And the pitch on the way to Carpenter. And the runner goes from first to second with no throw. 
Oh, why is he starting to head back? <laughs> he turned around and like almost started to go back. He was confused. <laughs> I don't have any idea. Then everybody on the bench was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe he thought it was foul. Could be. Odell ready with a 1-0 to Carpenter. Here it is. He misses. 2-0. Long inning. Yeah, it is. Collinsville got a run in the top of this inning, but three already across here in the bottom half for Nutrier. Carpenter awaits the 2-0 from Odell. Here it comes. Another ball into the turf. Gets away from Pomerantz, but not far enough for Spinner to advance. This has been such a long inning. The pitcher for Nutrier, Conniff, is Going down there to start maybe doing a little throwing. Well, it's a little chilly outside. Yeah, he wants to stay loose in this ch chilly air at night. Yeah, those high 70s from earlier in the week are gone after that strong cold front moved through last night. The brothers all have storms. 3-0 count. Got to make this one count. Need a strike. Odell brings it. Strike called. 3-1. and one. Since he's not batting, kind of. Needs to go back out there and stay loose. You know, sometimes when you're you're able to bat in this long inning, you don't mind as much. Well, Carpenter sacrificed bunt in his only at bat. Now he's up there with a chance to do some damage. Odell is ready with a 3-1. Here it comes. Swinging a bouncing ball to the third baseman, Harrington. He'll throw across the diamond in time for out number three, and that is the way that the third inning Comes to a close, but not before three runs come across for Nutrier. And now we head to the top of the fourth inning, and Collinsville will have a little comeback action. They'll have to try to perform here as we will take a break, come back, and tell you all about that fourth inning in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Looking for good food, good times, and good people? Look no further than the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Just over the bridge from the Cahawk Stadium, Bridge Inn features a friendly and courteous staff that serves up the coldest drinks and the best food in the Metro East. Lunch and dinner is available daily with a breakfast menu every Saturdays and Sunday morning. And don't forget about fantastic fish fry Fridays. Bridge Inn also features pool tournaments on most weekends and a gaming area for the over 21 crowd. Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Check them out at 519 North Main Street in Caseyville. Call for carryout orders at 618-344-3530. The best is yet to come at the Bridge Inn in Caseyville, 618-344-3530. Back here at GCS Ballpark in Soje, Todd Duke and Chris Kettler with you, 3-1 to one in favor of Nutrier. After Collinsville took a 1-0 lead in the top of the third, Nutrier comes back in and scores three runs in their half of the third inning, and they scored three runs on just... One base hit. Got an error in that inning and three wild pitches, a hit batter, a couple of walks. It all added up to three runs for Nutrier. Blaine Martinez will lead things off here for Collinsville. Martinez flew out to Ben Toft his first time up, and he'll be facing Conniff once again. Almost could have been worse for the Cahawks with pitcher going wild, the air. Yeah. Back in that third inning. Things didn't go the way they were playing, that's for sure. Rattle the bats here. Get some more runs. Trying to do that here in the fourth. This one's on outside, so 2-0. and oh. Blaine Martinez, Carson Peril, Jace Madura all do up here in the inning. If anyone can get on, maybe Darren Pinnell will have a chance to do some damage. Conniff ready with the next. 2 0 delivery to Martinez is on the way. Foul back to the screen. 2 and 1. Is that Spinner pitching? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Spinner's pitching? No. No? Okay. No, I think it's still Con. Okay. 
Declan? Yeah. Two and to the count to Martinez. I probably wrote it down wrong, that's why. Caught it. Ready with the next to Martinez. Here it is. Strike three called. He thought it was high. Pulled the bat back. And down on strikes is Martinez. Gave up on that one. It ended up dropping in. First strikeout for Conniff. And it'll be up to Carson Peril to become the first base runner here in the top of the fourth. Carson popped up to the third baseman. Nigro is first time up. And the pitch outside. Another pitch ready for Peril. Swing and a miss. He was trying to hit that one over to the gas station. Yeah, he wanted that one to go across the interstate all the way to the gas station there. Yeah. Not going to be likely. One and one the count. One out, Just top of the fourth. Find a way to drive it through the infield. Got to have some base runners, that's for sure. Another swing and a miss. Not going to get them all in one at bat. No. Can't hit a three-run home run with the bases empty. Collinsville trails by two. We're in the top of the fourth. One ball, two strikes to count to Peril. Here's the next pitch. He offered at it, and the umpire rings him up. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Conniff. And two away in the inning. So it's going to be up to Jace Madura, the second baseman, to extend the inning to Darren Pinnell, who waits on deck. Conniff rocks back and brings it home. Swing and a miss. Madura, a strikeout victim his first time up. And that was against Wood, who started this game for New Trier. Next one from Conniff is on the way. Swing and a miss. Conniff's up there throwing some heat now. Yeah, a batter gets in there real quick, but he's got a whole... Conniff got a whole situation here where he goes to the back of the mound to the front, moves his foot, moves his hat. <laughs> it doesn't pitch too fast. Now, next delivery on the way, and that one's a little low. Ooh, what that one? He thought it was a strike. He was ready to walk back to the dugout. One ball, two strikes to count. No one on, two outs. We're in the top of the fourth. 3-1 in favor of New Trier. They brought home a third-place trophy in Class 4A last year. And kind of ready with the 1-2 pitch. Inside, two and two. Back in 1980 in the state AA tournament, New Trier beat Joliet Catholic Academy six to nothing in the quarterfinals. Bartonville beat Barrington five to three in quarterfinals. Edwardsville beat Chicago Vocational nine to one. And Collinsville beat Oak Forest three to two. So it was one of those years where Collinsville and New Trier could have played in a state championship. Just didn't work out that way. In the semifinals, Bartonville beat New Trier seven to four. And Collinsville beat Edwardsville 12 to seven. And then in the final that year, Collinsville beat Bartonville seven to three for a state championship. So they almost could have played New Trier. They did beat their arch rivals Edwardsville. And then they went on to win the championship in the summer of 1980. Here's a full count pitch and we'll do it all over again as that one goes back to the screen. Teams almost met in 1983 as well. Semifinal, Collinsville won 8-2 to two over Peoria Richwoods, but yeah, New Trier, they ended up losing to Joliet West. Collinsville ended up losing the championship game that year, 2 to nothing to Waukegan. And that was the last time Collinsville has made it to state. Strikeout, 
Struck called him out, huh? to Madura, and he strikes out the side. Does mm. Conniff got two looking and one swinging, and that is going to do it for the top of the fourth inning. Nothing doing there for Collinsville. We will head now to the bottom of the fourth inning, and we'll be back to tell you all about it in just a moment on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Got vinyl? Rich's Record Emporium in Uptown Collinsville can take care of all of your vinyl needs and more. You can peruse through thousands of records, from country to hard-to-find jazz, and classic rock is always in stock at Rich's Record Emporium, used vinyl, new vinyl, and hard-to-find vinyl. Don't forget to check out the audio room at Rich's, where you can check out the latest in audio gear, from new top-of-the-line speakers to turntables and receivers, plus all of the accessories. Rich's has t-shirts, record cleaners, turntable needles, wall art, and so much more. If you can't find what you're looking for at Rich's, they will do their best to find it for you. Don't forget to mention seeing this ad on the Kayhawk Sports Network for a 10% discount at checkout. Rich's Record Emporium, 131 West Main Street in Collinsville, or call 618-795-1333 or online at richesrecordemporium.com. Once again, we welcome you back to GCS Ballpark here in Soje. Bottom of the fourth is where we have made it to. And Collinsville trails 3-1, to one, trying to hold it right where it is. Sonny Gray will pitch in a simulated pregame situation Sunday as his rehab continues. So we'll see if uh, the pegged opening day starter can actually keep that date alive. As we are ready to go here, Sam Nigro will lead things off. He's the number nine hitter to the third baseman. Then back to the top of the order in Ben Tofton, Aiden Nolan. And Odell pitches a first pitch strike, first pitch strike into Nigro, who flew out to center fielder Bryce Limp, his only at bat thus far. See what Odell can do with a fresh inning of his own. Yeah, he inherited a mess, that's for sure. Did a good job of getting out of it, except for the one... One run that just barely got through. Yeah. That one gets away from him, and it's one ball, one strike to count. To the new Trier third baseman, Sam Nigro. Odell brings home the next delivery. That one looked pretty good from this distance, but what do I know? Go low, didn't get the call. Kind of hard to see perched up here like this. Can't even see home plate. Odell peers over his glove, has his sign, and brings home the 2-1 pitch. And that one misses the mark as well, and it's 3-1. and one. Hawks won yesterday, 3-0 against Oswego in a uh, storm-shortened five-inning affair in Edwardsville's District 7 Sports Complex. Hawks trying to start the season off 2-0. But right now, New Trier has other ideas as that one painted the outside corner, and Nigro thought that uh, he had a walk. He's ready to toss his bat over. He was. Frustrated now, so he's digging back in. Digging back into that turf. Yep. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a base well, hit. Worked out for him. Yep, sure did. Nice little way to adjust there and get the ball the other way. That is only, on the, it's only the second hit for Nutrier in this game. Yeah, it was errors and errors, wild walks, and wild pitches. Yep. Everything but a hit. They had one hit in that three-run third inning. So now Odell has to deal with a runner at first base. Back to the top of the order and Ben Toft, who struck out in his first at bat, walked and scored in that aforementioned three-run third inning. Odell from the stretch now brings it home. High fly ball. This one's heading toward foul territory, and it'll stay in foul territory down in the Collinsville bullpen. Goes off the net there. Keep that ball in. I'll throw it back to the umpire. So just a long strike to right fielder Ben Toft. 
Runner at first, gets checked on. Back in there safely is the third baseman, Sam Nigro, who wears number three on his jersey. Plays third, wears three. Plays in position number five, though. Odell looks into Pomerantz, has his sign from the stretch. Throw over first again. Aiden Nolan, the center fielder, awaits on deck. Nobody out. How about a double play ball? They had a chance at one of those earlier and didn't get it. Well, that kept that inning alive. As Odell is ready with another pitch, maybe. And the runner goes. The 0-1 pitch is inside and low for a called strike, but the throw is too late. Oh, he now he's it. out. His hand came off the bag. Yep. His hand bounced off the bag, and a nice job there by Blaine Martinez to be aware of that and pop down that tag. It's a perfect situation there as the throw was late enough that by the time Martinez had it and was ready to tag down, the hand came off the bag and tagged him at the perfect opportunity. Yeah, perfect sure did. Time. And Odell now ahead in the count, 0-2 to the batter, Toft. Had the bag stolen and came off and a foul ball out of play into the night sky flag out in center field is not moving so thankfully the wind kind of disappeared because when I got here it was a little breezy count remains 0-2 to Ben Toff the right fielder for New Trier base is empty one out and the next pitch Ooh. <laughs> I think everybody in the whole building thought that was on the outside corner. It sounded like the new tour bench was very surprised he didn't get rung up there. Yeah. Say, ooh, you got lucky, bud. One ball, two strikes the count. Odell back to a regular windup. Peers over that glove. You can barely see his eyes. And the one-two pitch. Almost hit him. Two and two. We will not have a post-game interview. It's been a long evening here waiting for the uh, Mascuta morris game to end. And besides that, I didn't uh, want anybody to have to traverse through the stadium to come up here to try to talk to me. Once we get back into regular stuff at our own ballpark, we'll have post-game guests. That one gets away all the way back to the screen, and now it's a full count. Three and two to Ben Toft. Aiden Nolan waiting on deck. Thought he had him struck out here now. Next two pitches. Yep. Nowhere near. Don't lose him. Free passes are bad. Unless you're going to the movies. Swinging another foul ball out of play. That one will be back into the seats. If there was somebody sitting in that second to last row, they could have had a souvenir. All right, you get the balls back for high school. <laughs> uh huh? You got to give the balls back at high school. Yeah, you do. It cost enough. Another 3-2 pitch from Odell to Toft is not going to happen right now. Odell. Now he's ready to go, and here comes the pitch, and it's a walk. Almost had him struck out, lost him. First walk issued by Odell after Alcorn walked four. And just when we got rid of a base runner, we have another one and a chance for Aiden Nolan, who struck out in the first inning and came around to score after he reached on that Jace Madura error in the third. So now Odell back to the stretch once again. He delivers, and that one's a called strike. Let's see if Nutria tries to swipe another base here. Well, they almost got away with it. That was their uh, third attempt at a stolen base. First two were successful. Throw over to first base. And back. back in there is Toft. 
Myers stole a base in the first inning, and Ventavania stole a base in the third. As Odell goes back to work, and the 0-1 pitch to Nolan. I don't know why he's looking over at second. There's no one there. <laughs> Stepped off. Now he looks over his left-hand shoulder at his base runner. Top and brings the next one home. Swing and a miss. I think he took a little off of that one and way out in front was Nolan on that pitch. And it's 0-2. Through the signs here. Is the catcher with the pitcher? There we go. We'll see what they have lined up here. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a little excuse me base hit out to right field and on one bounce and a bounce and a half. Carson Peril comes up with it and the throw in is going to bounce away from third base and that will allow Nolan to make it all the way down to second. So now New Trier has runners on second and third with just one out. New Trier pressing the issue there, sitting the runner rounding second over to third, testing peril. And then it bounces away from Harrington and batter makes it all the way to second. Third a hit on the night for New Trier to go along with their three runs and they're looking to pick up some more. Infielders are playing in for the play at the plate as Trey Myers comes to the bat and looks at one that's a called strike. Myers walked, stole second base in the first inning and then was stranded and he was hit by a pitch and came around to score run number three in that three run third. Odell in a little trouble. Runners in scoring position and one out. And Odell brings it home, swinging a miss. And he seems to be getting ahead of all the batters. And then, for some reason or another, he can't finish him off. Getting real close to ringing one up. Ended up walking him, lost him. And then now they've kind of gotten some weak hits to the right side. Had Nolan down 0-2 as well. Ended up giving up that, excuse me, base hit. Here's an 0-2 pitch, and swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Myers. So that'll help. Infielders will go back to regular depth. They won't have to play in for the play at the plate. So two away, and here is Declan Spinner. Spinner. Walked and was left at third base in that three-run third inning. Flew out to Bryce Limp in center field in the first inning. Timeout called. Odell. Checking on his runners. Brings home the pitch. In there, there for go. a strike. Throwing some nice pitches when he needs to. He's been able to get ahead yeah. throughout this inning. Odell ready to go once again. Runners at second and third. Two away. 3-1 lead for New Trier. Odell pitches outside. Outside and high. One and one the count to Declan Spinner. And the pitch almost mm. hit him. He wouldn't have hit him. He, he didn't move very much, did he? Yeah. Turns back a bit and was maybe, hey, if you happen to hit me in the back, be okay with that. Yeah. So two and one the count now. Maybe they want to check with the field umpire and see if it hit him. <laughs> yeah. Stop one of those cars on the interstate, ask them. 
Odell from the stretch again. Checks on his runners. And the 2 1 pitch to Spinner on the way. And he misses with that one as well. Well, he's got to bring something here. Yeah, sure does. See what that something is. As Odell takes his time looking in for the sign. Now he's ready to go. 3 1 pitch to Spinner on the way. Stays high. high. He walked him. Base is loaded. Sixth walk of the evening for Collinsville pitching. Maybe someone might come out here and talk to Odell. Doesn't appear to be the case. They're going to have, have him face Miller. Max Miller, the DH, has walked and struck out in this game. Nowhere to put him. Odell's got to bring it in. There's the pitch. In the turf. 1-0. Runners full. For Nutrier. And the 1 0 pitch for Miller is on the way, and that mm. one's outside as well. 2 0. It's missing all over the place now. No one warming up here for Collinsville. Stands around, messes with the ball for a while. Now he finally. Digs in here. Yeah, now, now here comes Coach, comes now, Coach. Yeah, Coach Swift's going to call a timeout. Come out and talk to his guys here for a minute. He's been begging for some help. Come talk to me or show me something. Yeah. Seems like the last thing he wants to do is throw the pitch. <laughs> base runners all come over to the third base side. Coaches and the runners want to talk about it. The entire infield for Collinsville at the mound for a meeting. And all the outfielders are lonely. They'll talk to each other later. <laughs> Too far away to talk to each other now. Hey. How's it going over there? Maybe some hand signals. Another, I don't know. Another long inning for Nutria, and their pitcher, Conniff, is just kind of running a little bit, staying warm. Last, last inning, he through a little bit between innings. Meeting on the mound is over. Odell back to work. He's behind in the count to Max Miller, 2-0 with the bases loaded and two outs. Just need one little measly out here over to first base. Trying to uh, catch Spinner off guard. Nearly did. The yeah. throw was a little wild. A little wild. Going to just kind of beat him to the bag. It's probably what they talked about on the mound. Maybe, maybe a little trick or something to try to get that final out. Yeah. Odell brings it home. Another ball. Now some throwing starts down bullpen area. 3 and 0 oh the count now to Max Miller. As I mentioned, nowhere to put him, so you got to bring him three straight strikes or at least one to get, put it into play and get that out. Here's the pitch. High. He walked him. That walks in a run. So Toft comes in from third to score. And whoever's throwing down there is really ramping it up here. And this is, well, they even changed pitchers during an at-bat, so this might be the some of the last pitches here Odell throws. James Novakovic, the shortstop, struck out and grounded out so far in this game. He can do some damage with one swing. Here's the pitch, and off-speed pitch stays high. I think Odell's lost it. Yeah, he has. Everything's missing. And 
seventh walk issued by Collinsville pitching here in this game. That never spells anything but trouble. Odell ready with the 1-0. Here it comes. That one's in there for a strike. Still a bit high, but does get in there for a strike. that number another number I don't have what was it 19 19 yeah I guess I didn't get the whole entire roster did I Braden Henson down warming up for Collinsville Two and one the count, and the next pitch from Odell. Swinging a foul ball out of play, and leaving things up at two and two. Braden Henson, soccer goalie. But might not need him here as Odell is one pitch, one pitch away from getting out of this with only yeah. one run. Bases are loaded, two outs, two to the count. Odell ready to bring another one home, and here it is, another foul ball out of play. James Novakovic is hanging in there. They, uh... Old, older gentleman I gave a roster to earlier has probably uh, got a few kind words to say to me. <laughs> I gave him a roster that so far is missing two players. Another 2-2 two -two pitch from Odell to Novakovic. That's on the way. Stays high, three and two. Henson apparently is done warming up. So he heads back to the dugout. Yep, this will be the end for Odell one way or the other once he gets done with Nova Kovic at bat. And a 3-2 pitch awaits him. And he calls timeout. Everyone's ready now. Odell brings home another 3-2 pitch and a foul ball. As Novakovic tried to hold up that swing, but just got a piece of it. Odell ready to go back to work. Another full count pitch on the way. Swing and a base hit out to right field. That's going to score two more runs. The throw home is way offline, and everybody's going to move up a bag, including Novakovic, who goes down to second base. But stopping at third was Max Miller in to score, Aiden Nolan, and Declan Spinner. Well, at least he... Sense up and in there in the zone there. Didn't walk the man. Ended up being a base hit there. Make him earn it there. But that'll be the end of Odell as Coach Swift comes back out here to remove the pitcher. So. Expecting things. Henson to come in, I assume, since he was throwing. I would think so. No one's appeared from the dugout yet. I don't know. Looking, looking, looking. <laughs> Brett Swift's out there looking into his own dugout like, where's my guy? There is Henson. He'll come in, bottom of the fourth, two outs, runners on second and third still. Six to one in favor of New Trier. We will take a break and come back here and tell you um, how we're going to get out of this inning in just a moment on the Cahawks Sports Network. 
CUSD 10 residents have an opportunity to improve our schools without increasing the property tax rate by voting yes on March 19th. The zero rate change ballot initiative will provide funds to improve school safety and security, upgrade heating and cooling equipment, and make facilities more accessible to disabled students, staff, and visitors. For more information, visit yesforsaferschools.org. This message was brought to you by the Citizens for Safer Schools. Vote yes for the Unit 10 ballot initiative. First National Bank of Waterloo, with over 100 years serving the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo at their Maryville or Collinsville locations for all of your banking, mortgage, and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, call the Collinsville team at First National Bank of Waterloo at 618-345-1121 or visit their Maryville or Collinsville locations or online at fnbwaterloo.bank. First National Bank of Waterloo, member FDIC and equal housing lender. So Braden Henson will come in for Logan O'Dell, who came in for Chris Alcorn. And Alcorn goes out to take Carson Peril's place out in right field. So a couple of changes there for Collinsville as the Calcs trail in this one by a score of 6-1. to one. We are still in the bottom of the fourth inning. This has been a long inning. Been a long inning to go along with the long a game, long night. long night. We need an extra hour plus from the scheduled time to get the game started. Yeah, this game was supposed to start at 6.30. Didn't get underway till 7.45. And it's spinning the wrong way for the Calcs. Sure is. Oh, and their third pitcher of the game here in the fourth inning. And Jake Bentavigna will step up to the plate. Jake has walked, singled, and has a stolen base. He was stranded both times that he was on base here in this game. And he's got an RBI opportunity with two outs, runners at second and third. And three runs in the third, three runs here in the fourth so far. Henson, the righty, ready to go. Pitch outside. Things started off real well here for Collinsville with back-to-back -back strikeouts by Alcorn to start this game off with, and then things kind of slowly unraveled, and Collinsville pitching has been a little wild since then. There's one that's high. Early in the season, got to work out the bugs. Alcorn ready. That one misses as well. So Bentavania is ahead in the count. The new Trier catcher awaits the next. And that one's in there for a called strike. You know, Henson trying to find his strike zone. First couple pitches missed. He works pretty fast. I like it when they work fast. Next pitch. Ha, he walked him. Bases are loaded once again. Yeah, I like it when they just get the ball back and they're ready to go and Supposed to tugging on their cap, walking the back of the mound, kicking stuff. And now, Ellen Olesker is a batter. Oh, what number is he? Six. Six. Evan Olesker. He'll take the place of Caden Carpenter, and this represents the ninth batter to bat here in this inning for Nutrier. Bases loaded, two outs. That one's in there for a strike. Next one from Henson on the way. Swinging a foul ball out of play, and 0-2 the count. One pitch away from getting out of this, finally. Some more action down there for Collinsville. One, two, the count. Here's the next pitch from Henson. And a swing and a high fly ball. That one's going to drop right in front of Limp. And two more runs are going to come in to score. As that pitch or that throw in is a little offline, but it does make it to Pomerantz. 
at the home plate area right off to the third base side of it anyway. And it's now eight to one in favor of Nutrier. Go Mari Berry is down there throwing now. As this starts to get in dangerous territory as far as short game now here. If Nutrier can get three more runs, Collins will have their backs to the wall in the fifth. Yeah. Back to Sam Nigro, who started this inning off with a single. He was erased on a uh, stolen base attempt after his hand popped off the bag. Yeah, that was the same inning. Yep. So they could have had another one if he would have just – that was one of the outs. Swinging a high fly ball. Center fielder Bryce Limp backs up about ten steps, and he'll make it a catch, and that will mercifully bring it on and close to the inning, but not before – Another five runs come across the plate here for Nutrier. And that's going to spell a little doom for Collinsville as the Cahawks are down 8-1. to one. As we head to the top of the fifth inning, and Zach Roseman is up in the booth with us. So I'm going to put him to work here a little bit because yours truly has to use the facility. So Zach Roseman will have the top of the fifth for you here after this timeout on the Cahawks Sports Network. Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville. Let the professionals at Lakeside Roofing protect your most important investment, your home or business. Have the elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. Regular maintenance can extend the life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. Lakeside All-Star Professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside Roofing today at 618-344-2800 in Collinsville or 314-241-5253 or online at lakesideroofing.com. Choose experience, choose Lakeside. And a very good evening to you all. Again, I am Zach Roseman. I've been uh, pressed into duties here. Get ready to uh, start the bottom of the fifth. And, well, uh, long inning, but Kaox are finally able to get out of it. And, well, this is a good mental test. You didn't really have to deal with this yesterday because, well, it was you never trailed, and it was over with by this point. So we'll see what uh, Darren Pinnell is able to do as Conniff is still out there. Going into his third inning of work, I think. Yeah, he came in. Came in to start the third, I think. Start the third. He faced Pinnell first. Uh, you know, he's facing some guys the second time through at, right after Pinnell. Or, well, starting here with Pinnell. Yep. First pitch to him was over for a strike. Darren walked, uh, stole second, and then came around to score the lone run of the game for the Kayox back in the third as... Benton Vanga will come out to talk to Conniff. Those are opportunities to rattle the bats here over the chaos, get this going, maybe make this a game still. Yeah, still got time. Was, uh, well, they don't want to be here all night, but we'll see if the chaos are able to make things a bit more competitive as Conniff looks in for his sign. Don't worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Yep. Competing here today. That pitch just outside. One and one, the count. It's been a long day for these young men. They had school today. Mm -hmm. Now you're out here at 9.30 at night, still playing in this game, only halfway through it. Yeah, I mean, of course, you're used to uh, summer action, still playing multiple games in a day, but trying to get back into baseball shape as next pitch from Conniff misses low and away. We do have action in the Trevian's bullpen, but I have no idea who it is because that is a – Pretty far way away from me. Damari Berry continues to throw it down there in the Chaos bullpen. Let's see if he might come out. Big hack from Pinnell, brushed into the glove. Two and two the count. As about the 13th airplane of the game makes its way. Yeah, there's been a lot of those come through. Uh, down into uh, St. Louis Downtown Airport. Nutrier has made some defensive changes, but they didn't give us any of those up here. So yeah, we'll see as the next one gets past the catcher, and that will fill up the count now to the senior 
left fielder. Conniff comes set, and the three-two pitch. Hit him, I think. Either way, ball four. Oh yeah, ball four at any rate. And he came out. Umpire threw his hands up. And that'll bring us back to the top of the lineup for Carter Harrington, who has walked and singled. Here comes a coach out from New Trier. Yep, Talk to Khan. That might be it for him. We'll see. Bring the whole infield in. and Coach Swift having a conversation with Harrington. and Looks like this is just a talking to. Not going to make any change. As yet. How many pitches do uh, we have him at? Uh, this thing says 40. Okay. So he still could go for a while longer, but obviously still early in the year, looking to get the arms fully stretched out. He's had some long innings that his team's batted, so he was trying to stay warm each of those last two innings because his team is batted. Pinnell did steal a base earlier, so we'll see if he tries and do something like that again. As I'm not sure where that one missed, but umpire says no, that is not a strike. Chris Alcorn still on deck, having uh, moved out into the outfield. As big hack from Harrington gets nothing but air. Count now one and one. Throwing's wrapped up in both bullpens now. Yep. New Trier staff coming back now. Barry's been done. As the next pitch yep. is swung on and missed by Harrington. Uh, it's been so long since I've had to run the baseball scoreboard, I forgot about that. But anyway, kind of comes set. One, oh two, yeah. pitch two. Harrington misses away. Two and two now. Well, Kaox have uh, made kind of throw a decent amount of pitches in each at bat. Pinnell got it full before he was hit by the pitch, and two two count now here to Harrington. And that pitch is flared out into no man's land, out towards the Trevian's bullpen. Playing in their first game of the year, making the Long trek down from the north suburbs of Chicago. They'll be back in action tomorrow morning, same time as the Cahawks, as they take on the defending state champion, Andrewsville Tigers. Mm -hmm. Another foul ball, similar spot, a little farther out. Yeah, under that picnic area. Yep. And some young men out there in, the, in front of that scoreboard running around in that Hill, Hill hoping to get a foul ball, but there, I mean a home run ball, but there's many home runs. Check on Pinnell back in safely. Still a decent number of Kayhawk fans here after the long wait, but not too far away from home as that one is skied and it will be caught by Myers at first base. F3 will score that. And that'll be the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Alcorn, who has struck out and had the RBI single to score Pinnell back in the third. Yeah, that was when Kana first came in, hoping the Chaos could get a few more runs off him before he settled down. Yep. First pitch from Conniff is high. the left-handed hitting Lindenwood commit. Another check on Pinnell. And again, he is back in safely. Is that number nine at first base now? Next pitch is over for a strike. One one. Nine is at first base, that's correct. CJ Donald. Donald. Donnelly. Game changer didn't 
hasn't indicated any of these changes. As the next pitch was called a strike. So we're kind of in the yeah, we're blind as far as their defensive changes. One two pitch. In on the hands, but able to fight it off was Alcorn. Count will remain one and two. Don't you wonder in baseball what's the point of all this dugout being recessed back if everybody's just gonna be right up? Well, they uh that's a habitual thing. You want to get as close to the action as you can. Pretty much everybody from both teams right up on the top step. Collins has got guys that are on the edge of the turf there. Another one two pitch is the offer. missed. No one. check down. Now they yeah. are. He says it's fine. Oh. All right, two and two. Seems like the pitchers are really taking their time, not a uh, you know, talked about Bagwell last year about he's how he's a pretty quick working guy, but most of the pitchers here tonight have been pretty slow moving as a hard ground ball will get past the shortstop. And Pinnell will hold at second. And that'll be a base hit for Alcorn. Shortstop kind of slid past it. And it did take a little bit of a bounce up over the on the turf up over his head. Yeah. Pinnell did kind of Round second base a little bit and had to slide back in from the throw from center. That'll bring up Adam Bavinet, who has singled and reached on a fielder's choice. Been on base twice, but hasn't been able to get any farther than second. Got a runner in scoring position as the first pitch to him I guess misses just low. Ball one. One oh that one's over. One and one. And the next one in the pseudo dirt. Two and one. All turf surface here at uh now Grizzlies ballpark with uh GCS being uh, absorbed by some other banking company. 2-1 pitch is uh, catches the outside. anymore. Brevity Credit Union. Yep, but the naming rights not bought by anybody, so it is just Grizzlies Ballpark at this point. We'll see if that right. changes at all in the f your future. That one flared by Bavinet That's and will get down. Kind of an, an awkward position. Good thing nobody was going to be able to cover third base because Pinnell would have been in no man's land. Kind of had to hold up. Yeah. But the bases are loaded for Bagwell. Yeah, bases loaded for Bagwell with one out. And obviously, although it's been quiet as he's uh, 0 for 2 today, I mean, we've seen what Bagwell can do when he gets a hold of one. And he got a hold of one yesterday, so we'll see what he's able to do here. First pitch to him is over for a strike. First at bat was the better one. Nearly drove drove one a little ways. <coughs> Next pitch from Conniff. That one misses away. One and one now the count. Conniff brings it, and that one does catch the outside part of the plate. One and two, I think. Scoreboard has two one. Yeah, the scoreboard has two one, but I think it's one and two. We'll see. I got one. Yeah, I think it's one and two. And big swing and a miss there from Bagwell. Strikes out. It was one and two. It'll be the second out of the inning. And we'll bring up Bryce Lump, who is 0 for 2 with a flyout and a strikeout. It's not a big wasted opportunity. The chaos with the bases loaded. And yeah, it'd be, you'd hope that you could get at least. Big bats coming up. Yeah. 
First one to him, low. Ball one. No, or the eight. Yeah, hold on. Next one just misses. Two and a half. We're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, Martina's next, and then in the hole would be the spot that Peril would had. Next pitch over for a strike. But Alcorn hit for... He hit second already, so there would have to be. I'm not sure who exactly they would have to, I guess, have Henson hit or maybe bring somebody else in. I don't know. Next pitch from Conniff. Fouled back. Two and two. Now the count to. Somebody there has a helmet uh, down there in the hole. Uh -oh. Yeah, I don't know. I know in softball you have, like, the re-entry rule where you could but I don't know how exactly that works in baseball, so we'll see what happens here if uh, things continue. Next pitch to Lemp is fouled away again over towards the Kayhawk dugout, and it will be tracked down by the third uh, baseman, which I think is still Nigro, but I don't know for sure. As I said, Nutria did make a handful of uh, preseason or uh, current changes, so we'll see what happens there. And the next one misses away. Full count now to Lemp. And, well, nowhere to put him, so see what happens here. Walk would force a run across and get things going, and obviously a strikeout would be a big blow to the Kayhawks hopes here. The trail by seven runs. That ball is hit high and it will make its way out of play off of the little awning covering of the third base dugout concession area, kind of where the souvenir shop is here. And it will all be done over again. Another 3-2 pitch coming to Lemp. Runners will break early, and it is fouled off once again. Connors now at 70 pitches. Yeah, it made him work. and uh, thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Yeah, but you do get, you get a hundred and, uh, soft cap of 105, so... If he feels like he can keep going, his runners do take off. And that ball is hit into center field, kind of in between. A nice run there made by Carpenter to retire the side here in the top of the fifth. So nothing going there for the Kayhawks. They strand the bases loaded. We'll head now to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Score still 8-1 to one in favor of the Trevians. We'll be back here in just a bit on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Keep your ride shiny and clean with Extreme Details Vehicle Detailing in Collinsville. Owner Jay Merkel and his crew at Extreme Details believe in the value of community and in helping their community hold the value of their vehicles with a sharp-looking, clean ride that you and your community can be proud of. Extreme Details can handle any job, whether you drive a small car, an SUV, or even a bus or RV. No job is too big or too small at Extreme Details. Extreme Details offers scratch and oxidation removal. No matter what you drive, cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, and more. Plus, Extreme Details can handle fleet vehicles for you and your company. Call Jay and the gang at Extreme Details at 618-977-1224. Check for periodic specials on the Extreme Details Facebook page. Put the shine in your ride with Extreme Details, 618-977-1224. And once again, we welcome you back here to Grizzlies Park. I forgot all about GCS being uh, no longer a uh, place of business, and Revity has taken over, so didn't even dawn on me. 
Yeah. Anyway. You get used to names and you forget that they're yeah. <laughs> actual like companies and stuff. Amari Berry will come in and pitch for Collinsville. Amari is uh, going to Alexandria College in Alexandria, Minnesota to continue his baseball career. And he will deal with the top of the order in Ben Toft. Toft has walked in his last two plate appearances and came around to score both times. Big thank you to Zach Roseman for filling in so uh, I could go uh, visit the facilities here at this fine ballpark. And there's a swing and a chance for Medora, and he's up with it and throws in time for out number one, and that's the way that the top of the sixth gets going. Oh, one pitch, one out. Yeah, I like that. Easy enough for Barry. Playing some football. Was on the defensive side there for the Kayox back in the fall. Aiden Nolan has also scored in back-to-back -back innings in the third and the fourth, reached on an error by Medora in the third and then singled and came around to score later in that five-run fourth. Mari Berry, ready with the next. That one's inside. 2-0. Berry works quickly. Next pitch misses. And the next delivery is also missed. Collinsville has walked a lot of batters here. That is their eighth walk issued in this game. Hard to win baseball games when you're walking eight people and corking, uncorking four wild pitches and a hit batter as well. You know, they haven't really ran off the bats this new trip. No, they only have four hits in this game, but they have eight runs. Kind of making it a little too easy for them. That one's in there for a strike. One runner on, one runner out. One batter out, excuse me. And the next pitch is into the turf, and the Pomerant's not going to be able to do anything about that one. So another wild pitch. Wild pitch number five for Collinsville. And C.J. Donnelly is actually the one at the plate. And he's up there in the hole, one and two. And now time called as I think a ball got away from the bullpen area. Collinsville has another pitcher warming up. Keaton call. Barry back to work with a runner at second base. Swing and a miss. There you go. Nice pitch there. Got him swing through that one. Works around the walk. Now we got two down. Down on strikes is Connolly, or Donnelly, excuse me. And here is Declan Spinner. Spinner has flew out. That was way back in the first inning. And then back-to-back -back walks came around to score on the last walk in the fourth inning. Now Barry steps off. Max Miller waits on deck. Eight to one in favor of New Trier. And the pitch is outside. Top of the sixth is where we are. Getting kind of late in this one. It's been a long one. Like I said, I got here at 5 o'clock. I always try to show up to my games an hour and a half before the game starts. This is the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth. Is that all it is? Yes. <laughs> you do have top of the sixth I on do. your thing here. Yeah. There you go. Don't know how that happened. The computer likes to jump ahead. Oh, there's a base hit, and that one's out to the uh, right fielder, and the throw home is going to be in time. He it? is out at home plate. Wow. Nice, strong throw there from Chris Alcorn. 
out in right field, and he nails it to Pomerantz, and Pomerantz tags the runner out on his way home, Aiden Nolan, and that is how the fifth inning comes to a close. Now we head to the top of the sixth inning, and it stays 8-1 to one in favor of New Trier. Back to tell you all about the top of the sixth in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Todd Duke here, proud member of the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Whether you call us teachers' aides, paraprofessionals, or educational assistants, it all comes down to one thing, taking care of students. More importantly, your student. Yes, we are there for the teachers, and we help them in any way possible. But our goals are in line with our teachers in that we want to see our students succeed at not only being a student, but well beyond that as we ready them for the world outside of the classroom. We are union strong. We are Cahawk strong. We strive to help students reach their potential. We are the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Go Cahawks! Chapman Trucking LLC. Chapman Trucking is a local Collinsville business owned and operated by 1994 Collinsville graduate Christy Chapman. With over 10 years of experience, Chapman Trucking LLC can take care of all of the heavy lifting when it comes to hauling aggregate materials such as sand, driveway rock, dirt, boulders, and more. That includes getting your heavy work equipment to your work site where it needs to be. Give Christy a call for a free estimate at Chapman Trucking LLC, 618-960-9346 or online at Chapman Trucking LLC. Net. Once again, we welcome you back to Soje. Top of the sixth. Collinsville trailing eight to one. And it'll be Blaine Martinez who will lead things off. Blaine Martinez. 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. Need to get some runs here. They had a big opportunity back in the fifth. Mari Berry will get a chance to bat. He waits on deck. And the first pitch into Martinez is a strike. And Pedro Hernandez is the new pitcher on the mound for New Trier. So he misses outside with that one. Martinez, the righty, ready to go. Swinging a bouncing ball to the third baseman. Nigro is up with it. Long throw over to first base, and it's in time for out number one. Well, pretty routine there. He's able to make the throw. There's a new first baseman that came in last inning. Makes a snag here, and Barry will get his first plate appearance. Amari uh, Barry. Get a chance to bat at least once. Got through that scoreless inning back in the fifth. Keaton Call waits in the on-deck circle. He'll bat for Jace Madura. Oh, I think he was warming up. Yeah, I did too. Last inning, I wonder if he's going to do any pitching. Or are they going to go back to Barry in the bottom of the sixth? I don't know. I guess we'll all find out together. Hernandez ready with a 2-0 to Barry. Here it comes. Outside, 3-0. Hernandez definitely the quickest working of the three pitchers of New Trier. Yeah, New Trier showing nothing but uh, righties here as far as their pitching is concerned. And Hernandez brings another one home. That one's in there for a strike. I liked the weather a few days ago a lot better. Upper 70s. My feet are cold. Didn't see any 70s in any of the upcoming forecasts. Nope. There's a swing and a shot down the line. On the run, not going to get there, is Spinner out in left field and on his way to second base with a stand-up double is Amari Berry. There you go. Nice piece of hitting there. Gets that one to the wall. It's a big hit the Cavs have been looking for. It would be nice to get that last inning. Yeah. Berry didn't get the start. In the batting order, but makes the most of his first opportunity. And I think Coach Swip will go with a courtesy runner for Barry is popping out of the dugout is number seven, Luke Robinson. 
So Robinson in to run for Barry. That is the uh, fifth Kayhawk base hit here in this game. Right there with him when hits. Yes. Yeah. Just can't string them all together at once. Haven't been able to take care of the opportunities they had. Yeah. And here is Keaton Call batting for Jace Madura. Call from the left side. And the pitch is off of the catcher. I believe Robinson that hit him. In, down. I think it hit him in the shin pad. Came bouncing all the way over into the Kayhawk dugout. Robinson running from second to third fell down. Yeah. So if, if the catcher, Bentavenga, could have handled it somewhat cleanly, Robinson would have been a dead duck laying on the ground, laying on the turf. So runner down at third base, one out for Keaton Call. Chance for an RBI for him. And the 1-1 pitch from Hernandez is on the way. Inside, but a called strike. Top of the sixth, eight to one in favor of New Trier. Brought home a third place trophy from state last year. Here's the pitch, swinging another shot down the line. That one's going to stay fair, going to roll all the way to the corner. Robinson comes in no problem at all. And how about back-to-back stand-up doubles by both Barry and Keaton Call? A couple of guys who weren't in the batting order making the most of their first opportunities up to bat. The hits down the left field line there. Gives the Cowks their second run of the night. Sixth hit, second run, and here is Darren Pinnell. Pinnell was hit by a pitch in the last inning. He's been on base twice, walked and scored the car, the Chaos first run back in the third. Collinsville had a one nothing lead after that. That seems like hours ago. Pinnell with an RBI opportunity here as there's only one out, and he looks at a strike right across the numbers on the chest. Hernandez peers into his catcher. Has his sign, works from the stretch. Checks on his runner at second. Checks on him again, and Pinnell says, you took too much time. I'm going to go ahead and step out. Carter Harrington waits on deck. We hit 10 o'clock here in Soje. We're getting into holiday classic territory as far as I'm telling you. late night. I've been here for five hours. Now I'm hungry again. I had dinner right before I came. <laughs> it was a school day, so players had to be up early, so it's been a long day for them. I'm sure. And now they got to turn around and play another game that starts in 12 hours. I was right there with them. Me too. I got to get up early tomorrow. I don't. <laughs> And that one gets away and over to third base. We'll go Keaton Call. First wild pitch issued of the of the night for Nutrier. Yeah, as I mentioned, tomorrow is the uh, daughter's birthday. We're starting off with a uh, trip to Pacific because we are going to be marching in the St. Patrick's Day parade. Do they know that it's on Sunday, it's St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, but Pacific's having theirs tomorrow. And uh, one of our relatives owns a business in Pacific. There's a bouncing ball. First baseman has to back up, goes off of his shoulder, and that's going to score a run. I think that would have been a base hit anyway. As far as he had to go off the bag to even get to it, and then it took a crazy hop on the turf. So Pinnell gets on, and now Harrington will bat. Two runs in this inning for the Gayhawks. Hernandez has given up a couple runs, and now, Nutria will have a guy run down to the bullpen to start warming up, and that's Roush. After uh, Blaine Martinez grounded out, back-to-back -back stand-up doubles by Amari Berry and Keaton Hall, and then an RBI single by Darren Pinnell. Collinsville has plated two here. And Carter Harrington, he's had a base hit in this game as well. But he was... Uh, 
thrown out. Coming around second, trying to make it into third earlier. He was walked in the first inning and was stranded at second base. Pinnell at first. One out. Two runs home here in the inning. Harrington and company trying to keep that line moving. Throw over to first base and back in there in time is Pinnell. Pinnell has a stolen base in this game. Stole second before he came around to score on the RBI single by Chris Alcorn in that third inning. There's a swing and a long fly ball. That one's going back. That one is going to be over the fence for a home run. Carter Harrington with a big two-run shot, and that brings Collinsville back to within three at 8-5. to five. Nice hit there. Really stroked that one over the left field wall. No doubt or getting over that tall outfield wall over there and left. This pitcher Hernandez has struggled a bit after getting the first batter out. And Chaos could have got some opportunities last inning. It could be a tied game now, but it's definitely a much more interesting game now down here at 8-5. Sure is. It's far from being over. That'll bring up uh, Chris Alcorn. Alcorn's been on base in his last two at-bats, back-to-back singles in the third and the fifth. Strikeout victim back in the first. Here's the first pitch for our, from Hernandez. That's in there for a called strike. So Collinsville with four runs already here in this sixth inning. They've climbed back from an 8-1 deficit to 8-5. to five. That one just misses. You're getting worried about a 10-run situation. Yeah. When they were, uh, Dutcher was batting in the bottom of the fourth. Now it's a new game. Sure is. Kind of like the game that preceded us. It was 7-2, and then Norris got it down to 7-6. Ended up being 8-6. That one misses outside, so again from 0-1 to 3-1. Bovinet waiting on deck. Hernandez steps off. Now he's still on there. Oh, he stepped off for a brief second. Swing oh, his bat twice. His bat twice. Yeah. He could have done that if he tried. Nope. Those are usually things that happen when you don't try. So a full count now. And the next delivery to Alcorn on the way. It's high. He walked him. Did I? Another opportunity for Collinsville here. Down by three now. And that is the third walk issued by new Trier pitchers, and that's going to bring out the pitching coach. They do have a uh, pitcher warming up down in the bullpen. Not sure if he's already warmed up or not. He's making a walk back in here, and I won't be surprised if they go ahead and make this change. And uh, Well, I didn't take the ball from him yet. I was really expecting them to, and now number seven, who was down there throwing, starting to walk back in. Well, now he's dancing around. They're not going to keep him in there. Give him one more. And that one more is going to be Adam Bovinette. Bovinette has been on base three times today. Singled in the first, singled in the fifth, and reached on a fielder's choice in the third. See if Adam can put the ball in play. Keep this line moving. Ethan Bagwell on deck. Right now, it's Adam Bovinette, the lefty, playing first base here tonight. Hernandez works from the stretch, checks on his runner, brings it home. High and outside, ball one. Okay, yeah, now the <laughs> coach didn't like what he saw after that pitch, and they're going to go ahead and make the change. Yeah, they're going to have to now. Nice. All right, we are going to have a pitching change, so we have a timeout coming your way. We'll tell you all about the new pitcher after we come back from a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Lottie's Cafe offers food, cocktails, and gaming in a great atmosphere highlighted by fast and friendly service. Lottie's Cafe also offers a unique menu that features soups and salads, sandwiches and paninis, pizza and flatbreads, appetizers and desserts, as well as breakfast. That's right. 
We said breakfast, unique breakfast items such as a breakfast stromboli, a breakfast BLT, and breakfast burritos. Lottie's also offers creative cocktails, a wine bar, the coldest beer around, and a video gaming area for those 21 and older. And don't forget the Lottie's Cafe gift certificates. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Check them out online at Lottie'sCafe.com, on Facebook, or in person in the Strip next to the Walmart Neighborhood Market. Or call Lottie's Cafe at 618-223-8256. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Looking to buy a new home or sell your current home? Trust the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty with all of your real estate needs. The real estate market is hot right now, and you can trust the years of experience the Blaylock Group brings to the table. The Blaylock Group can help you find your dream home, or they can help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty, 618-780-4622. That's 618-780-4622. The Blaylock Group of EXP Realty. Old Harold Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville produces their own spirits and beer on site right at the restaurant. Pair that with some of the most unique menu items around the entire metro area and you can see why they are such a hit. They can handle you and your family or they can handle you and your group. Throw in the occasional live entertainment and you can see why Old Harold Brewery and Distillery is a must-stop destination in Collinsville. Old Harold Brewery and Distillery, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville, 618-855-8027 or online at oldheraldbrewing.com. All right, welcome back once again to Grizzlies Park here in Soje. Adam Bovinette steps back into the plate. He has a 1-0 count in his favor after Pedro Hernandez got removed after one pitch to the Collinsville first baseman. One out in the inning, four runs home here in the top of the sixth for Collinsville. And the Chaos will face their first lefty in Justin Rausch. And now a timeout called. So after all those warm-up pitches, pitcher and catcher need to get back on the same page. I don't know what they're waving at. They're waving at something. I don't and have any idea what. This field umpire. Are they trying to get a hold of you guys? What are they doing? Umpires are out there waving their hands. Are they waving it at you guys? Oh, yeah, music. <laughs> well, the music was left Music on. was on. And you get a big Bronx cheer for turning the music down. I can't even hear it. I, I got these headphones on. I can't hear anything. I don't know what they're... Yeah. I didn't have any idea. All right, now the lefty's ready to go, and there's a swing and a shot to the shortstop. Off of his glove, everybody's going to be safe. Shortstop just played half step too far to his left. As he had to veer to his right, he snagged that one down, and this will be a big opportunity for Bagwell. Bagwell struck out with the bases loaded in his last at bat. Popped up in the first, grounded out in the third, struck out in the fifth. Going to bring somebody in here to run for ball of the net. Might be Kraus again. There's Cameron Kraus. Cameron Kraus. He did come in as a courtesy runner earlier, yep. but now he'll be considered to take ball of the net's spot, but ball of the net will probably re-enter. So Bagwell with an opportunity to tie it up with one swing here. Roush, the lefty. From the stretch, brings it home. Swing and a high fly ball, but this one's going to stay in the park. On the move is Spinner, and he'll take the catch and throw it back in, and no one can move up. So Bagwell. Second time he swung at the first pitch. Yeah. That time he does get it up in the air, but doesn't go too far. Easy catch there for Nutcher left fielder, and he'll be up to Bryce. So runners at first and second. Bryce Limp with an opportunity here to make it a little tougher for New Trier to win. Two away, runners on at first and second. Limp is 0 for 3 on the afternoon, or the evening, excuse me. 
And Roush pitches, and it's into the turf. Nice stop back there by the catcher. Evening, night, if we play long enough here. We'll I know. We'll be day. saying good morning to you. <laughs> so 1-0 the count to Bryce Limp. Roush checks on his runners again, brings it home, and this one's high, 2-0. Blaine Martinez waits on deck. He started this inning off with a ground out. Roush, once again, checks on his runners, brings home the 2-0, swing and a miss. Limp was going for that one. He swung on a 3-0 earlier in the game. Always looking for something to drive. Will he get an opportunity here with a 2-1 count in his favor? Roush brings the next one home. Swing and a foul ball up against the screen right at the end of the Cahawks dugout. That'll even things out at two and two. I'd like to see him pull one down the right field line into the hot tub. Deuces wild. Two on, two out, two to the count. Limp steps back in from the left side. Would like something to drive here. Runners go. Swinging a high fly ball. That one's going to stay up in the air long enough for Nolan to get underneath it, except for Toft will come over from right field to make the catch right in front of his center fielder, and that is the way that the top of the sixth comes to a close. But Collinsville picks up four big runs, and the Cahawks are back to within three. Getting kind of late, though, as the Cahawks trail by three as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and we're back after a timeout here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't have toys, am I right? If your adult toys consist of boats, campers, or RVs, then you need to call the GASA storage team of professionals. Winter weather in the Midwest can be quite harsh, and finding a place to properly store those expensive toys for winter can be just as rough as a Midwest winter. That's where the GASA storage team comes in, with outdoor self-storage and covered storage for your toys. They even have tractor trailer parking. Conveniently located at Horseshoe Lake Road in 111 in Pontoon Beach. GASA Storage for the safe storage of all of your toys. Contact the GASA Storage team. GASA Storage at gmail.com or call today. GASA Storage Team 618-797-6100. Back here at Grizzlies Ballpark in Soje, eight to five in favor of Nutrier. Nutrier, excuse me. Knew I was going to say that at least once, just because of the way it's spelled. <laughs> Todd Duke is my name. Chris Kettler on the other microphone. Got a little brief cameo appearance from Zach Roseman a couple of innings ago, because it's been a long day, man. Been here for over five hours now. At some point, I was going to have to go to the bathroom, right? Amari Berry back out there to pitch for Collinsville. And the first pitch is a little high to the leadoff batter, which is now Mason, Mason Bloom. Bloom. And Bloom in there for the first time tonight. And Berry. With a 2-0 pitch inside, ball three. Walks have gotten Collinsville into trouble in this game. Don't want to do it again. Here's the 3-0. Inside and high again. Walked him. Nowhere close on any of those pitches. Barry got through a scoreless fifth. James Novakovic, a shortstop, will bat. Singled and scored his last time out. So a runner on first base. Another one high. So Barry having trouble finding the strike zone all of a sudden, too. Didn't get the four run rally starting. Top of the inning with that double.
And another one high, pops out of the glove of Pomerantz. He didn't know where it was, and that's going to allow Bloom to make it all the way down to second base. So that is a passed ball. First passed ball issued by Collinsville today, or issued by the catcher. After a string of wild pitches, five of them to be exact, a hit batter, a bunch of walks, and now a passed ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got another uh, pitcher warming up in the bullpen for Collinsville. I don't have one of those either. Um, Matt Reynolds. Matt Reynolds? I got to update my roster when I get back to school Monday. They're all on Game Changer here. There's all these names. Yeah. Well, uh, which is put everybody in. Who knows what they're going to do? I was going by the uh, roster that got sent to me by head coach Brett Swip. Apparently they've uh, done some adjusting to that roster since he sent me that one. 2-1 is the count to Novakovic. And another high pitch. Two and two, or excuse me, three and one. Thank you. Ooh, that's nice and warm. My hands are cold. Feet are cold too. I think because this floor has got this tile on it and it's cold. Strike in there. Full count. Nobody out. Runner at second base. New Trier already up eight to five. Collinsville would like to keep it right where it is. And the pitch is high, and there's another walk. When he misses, he continues to miss high. Got to bring it down a bit. Jake Bentavania is coming to the plate. He has reached base three times. Two walks and a single. <clears throat> Shows bunt, and this one goes right to Barry. Flips to Bobinette, steps on first for the out. Runners move up to second and third. Twelve walks. Now batting number six, Evan Olsker. Evan Olsker will come up now. As Trevian settled for just moving the runners over. Taking the out, even though. Barry has been missing high, walked a couple guys. I think I forgot to write down a couple of walks. That's why I was uh, paused there for a minute. I was trying to count them all up. 11 walks is a lot. Yes, it is. <laughs> Runners on second and third, one out. And here is Lester. High. Sam Nigro, the third baseman, on deck. Barry trying to work on this batter and record an out. There's a start. That's a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Mari Barry ready with the next pitch. Swing and a miss. Field playing in. Yep, trying to cut don't, down that play at the plate. Don't want to give up any more runs. Barry ready with a 1 2. Swinging a little flare that goes into the stands. A few people, I guess, came down from New Trier. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Probably about 15, maybe. One ball, two strikes to count. And Barry, long time looking in. Here is the one two. Down low, two and two.
Very ready once again. And the 2-2 pitch on the way, up high, 3-2. <clears throat> I've already made an executive decision. There will be no post-game show tonight. As soon as this one's over, I am closing down and going home. Long day ahead tomorrow. So I apologize to uh, Dr. Chris McCluskey at Chiropractic Works. We'll have to make it up at some other point. Here's a 3-2 pitch. He offered at it, and the umpire said he went around, so that's a strikeout. And that is out number two. Maybe it might have almost been a strike anyway. Yeah. But they run him up. He gets the second out. So two away. And Sam Nigro, the number nine hitter in the order for New Trier, is going to see if he can keep this inning extended. Barry on the mound for Collinsville, trying to end it. Here's the first pitch, swinging a foul ball back to the screen. When you're the boss, you can make executive decisions like that. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, this is the only thing I'm a boss of. That one misses high, one and one the count. Runners on second and third. Two away. Bottom of the sixth inning, and the pitch. Swinging another foul ball. That one's to the top of the screen. Almost went back to the stands, but the screen's pretty high here. That's one strike away from getting out of this. Yeah. I think we've said that a couple of times here tonight, haven't we? Yep. One ball, two strikes to count. Trier gave us the first out and then gets the strikeout. Can we get this one? That one's outside. Two and two. Deuces wild once again. Two on, two out, two to the count. And Barry is ready with the 2-2 pitch. Here it is, swinging a shot down the third baseline, but that is foul into the Cahawks bullpen. And we'll do it all over again. Balls get thrown back in here, waiting for, here we go, we're all ready. Barry looking for another strikeout to get out of this inning. Yeah. I'm looking for the same thing. Another 2-2 two -two pitch on the way to Sam Nigro. And here it comes, outside. First base is open. Ben Toth, the leadoff man, waits on deck for Nutrier. Barry would like to keep him in the on-deck circle. Here is the pitch. Right back to where it came from, off of Barry's leg. That's going to score a run, and that's unfortunate. Very close if he could have just backed up a little bit. Might have been able to get the glove on it and have a chance at a throw it over to first in the inning, but run does come in to score. We're going to have to check on Barry because that one banked off of his leg. Want to make sure he's okay. So 9-5. Barry seems all right. I don't know if I know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I know how to do that. Added it to the wrong side, did they? Yeah, they gave it to the Chaos one. All right. It is nine to five. And here is Ben Toft with runners at the corners and two away. Toft on the afternoon is 0 for 2 with two walks, two runs scored. That's sandwiched in between a strikeout and a ground out. Barry works from the stretch and brings it home inside. Once again, Barry back to work. Oh, a little high. 
2 and 0. Oh. Barry back to work once again. Brings it home. Mm. Inside there. Missing all over the place now. Earlier in the inning, he was just missing high. You know, I told my wife I was going to be home at 11 o'clock because <laughs> I told her that uh, we were going to go out and to LC's and have a couple of drinks, and then I was going to be home because I knew I had a long day tomorrow. All but four. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, LC's is off the table now, that's for sure. They're going to go to Reynolds now to come in and pitch, and that will wrap the night up for Barry. Nearly got out of this inning unscathed. Nearly. But we have the bases loaded and two away. And that's going to do it for Barry. So we are going to step aside for just a moment. And we're back after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Your home is where you feel happy, safe, and secure. So if you see signs of foundation problems like cracks or uneven floors, worrying is natural, and getting it fixed is crucial. Woods Basement Systems understands. We've been solving foundation worries since 1986. Woods experts have the training and equipment to make permanent repairs. So stop worrying, because with Woods, it's fixed forever. Foundation problems don't get better with time. They get better with Woods, the all-things basement -y experts. Call or go to woodsbasementsystems.com today. Collinsville High School alumni Stacy Lowenstein, CHS Class of 91, Lisa Bassetto, Sarah Sulky, and Tracy Limp, CHS Class of 94, Tony Geisen, CHS Class of 96, and Kevin Robinson, CHS Class of 99, want to wish all of our Cahawks a great year. We look forward to cheering you on and supporting you. Work hard on the court and the field, as well as in the classroom. Remember, once a Cahawk, always a Cahawk. Hashtag Cahawk family. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KHOCKSports.com and the Kayhawk Sports Network. The CEA is your partner as they work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website at CollinsvilleCEA.org. Back here at Grizzlies Park in Soje, Todd Duke, Chris Kettler along with you as Matt Reynolds will come in and pitch for Collinsville. Amari Berry stays in the game. He'll take the place of Bryce Limp out in center field because Bryce is going to be pitching tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Yeah, that's what we've all assumed that they might want to be ready to get him out of here because it's 10.30 at night now. Yeah, I know. Yes, it is. And back to action we go. Nine to five in favor of Nutrier. We're in the bottom of the six still, so we still have one more inning to go here. Get your, come out here and talk to him. Reynolds. Bases are loaded. And Aiden Nolan to the plate. They got the additional run for Collinsville now off the board. Yeah. And now the score will be turned. There we go. And Reynolds ready with another one and a bouncer. Third baseman, nice stab by Carter Harrington. He steps on third base for the out, and that's the way that the bottom of the sixth inning comes to a close. So we head to the top of the seventh inning. Collinsville now down by four instead of three after another run comes across here for Nutrier. And we'll be back to tell you all about the top of the seventh in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Pack Mail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. Pack Mail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. Pack Mail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate controlled self storage. Visit Pack Mail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at WeShipStLouis.com or call Pack Mail at 346 48 
eight four. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fritz? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your home? Trust Tiger. Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure your plumbing, heating, AC, and electric are up and running no matter what time of day it is. Schedule your appointment today. Tiger Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical Services. We earn our stripes every day. All right, we are back here at Grizzlies Park in Soje, Collinsville down to their final three outs here. And they will be facing Jack Wilson, who comes in to pitch now for New Trier. And Lester stays in the game. He'll take over second base for Caden Carpenter. And for Collinsville, their last chance here will be Blaine Martinez to lead things off. Followed by Amari Berry. And then I think Keaton Call still in there? Not really sure. Blaine Martinez leads off. Yeah, well, they got it started last inning. Got the KOX 4. You need to come away with at least four. Yeah. To send this to the bottom of the seven. Martinez 0 for 3 on the night. He'd like to get on base just to get things going here, and he'll look at one on the outside corner. That one looked a little far outside too. I think the uh, umpires might be ready. I to think go the down. umpires are ready to get out of here too. Yeah, so that first game was supposed to start at four o'clock. Yeah, and it started late, so they've probably been here even longer than you. No, oh, I'm sure they have. Well, clearly, quickly were. two and zero oh to Martinez because the game had started. <laughs> or two oh, oh and two, and there's a strikeout. Three straight pitches, three straight strikes, and that equals one out. That's only the fourth strikeout for uh, new tree or pitchers here tonight, too. Next delivery, and that one. Hit the umpire. Yeah. Thought for a minute there that it almost hit Barry as well, but it missed Barry and went straight to the umpire's leg. <clears throat> so the catcher does what good catchers do once an umpire gets hit with the ball and will walk out and talk to his pitcher to give the umpire a chance to shake it off. Coaches check, come in and check on him too. So Collinsville now down to their final two outs. Uh, and Amari Berry doubled and scored in the last half inning. And Collinsville was to the plate and Fouls one into the screen down the first base side. One and one is the count. Keaton call on deck. Next pitch from Wilson inside. Jump out of the way of that one a little bit. Two and one the count. Wilson brings it home. Swing and a miss. Two and two to Amari Berry who apparently likes to fish. He's looking forward to going to Minnesota to go to college because there's plenty of lakes. He's like, there's lakes all over the place. I'm like, yeah. There's a strike and back-to-back -back strikeouts by Martinez. And one more out is all as Collinsville's got left in the bag. And here is Keaton Call, who doubled and scored his last time up as well. Back-to-back stand-up doubles with him and Barry. Yep, got that inning going for the chaos, but a long way to go here now with two outs. Wilson mowing them down. <clears throat> Next up for us is Zach Roseman will be taking care of the boys' volleyball season opener Tuesday against Saxony Lutheran. I'll be back with you Wednesday afternoon. Softball between Collinsville and Freeburg from the Collinsville Sports Complex. And then Thursday, I'll be at Belleville East for a little girls' soccer action as the Cahawks open up the Southwestern Conference portion of their schedule. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Keaton Call, and that is going to do it for us. Collinsville loses this one here tonight by a final score of 9-5. to five.
We appreciate you tuning in and hanging out with us for a very long evening of baseball. A big thank you to uh, Zach Roseman, who just walked out the door. Thanks Chris Kettler, yeah, you're always uh, welcome in the broadcast booth at any time. And a big thank you again to Brett Swift for joining us in the post-game interview. My name is Todd Duke. Sorry if we uh, missed out on a couple of commercials for our sponsors, but it has been a very long day, and we want to get out of here and go home. i got a very long day ahead of me tomorrow as well. So until uh, Wednesday afternoon, everybody have yourselves a fantastic St. Patrick's Day weekend.